White's Fort, a lone outpost built on the banks of the Tennessee River in 1786 by Captain James White. As a permanent sentry for all those volunteers who were bold enough to challenge the southern frontier. A meeting place of great importance, it once hosted a treaty signing between George Washington's administration and the Cherokee Indians. And its imposing walls provided safe haven from enemies, including wild beasts indigenous to the area, bears and panthers and wolves. More than two centuries later, another fortress guards the banks of the Tennessee River. Neyland Stadium, also a meeting place of great importance. Built to repel wild beasts indigenous to the current Tennessee frontier, tigers and hogs and bulldogs. One beast, however, has made a habit of successfully penetrating this modern fortress. The Florida Gator, swift and sudden attacks. End zone bound and caught for a touchdown. Interrupted by short-lived ball redemption. The kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no, sir, Reed. The Gators have stolen victories. It's going to be in the end zone. It's a touchdown, Jamar Gaffney, and the Gators have taken the lead. And left the Volunteers swamped in a flood. Another fumble. That is the third bad exchange. This is unbelievable. So once again, along the banks of the mighty Tennessee River, as summer silently fades into fall, volunteers everywhere, beware. The gators are lurking in the night. A gorgeous night in eastern Tennessee. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS, where more than 108,000 will gather for this SEC conference opener, a traditional season opener between the Gators of Florida and the Volunteers of Tennessee. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Todd Blackledge and Tracy Wolfson. We welcome you to Knoxville. For most of the 90s and the early part of this century, this was a, these two programs were regarded as among the five best in the country. And this early season matchup had national championship relevance each time they played. Florida won the title in 96, Tennessee won it in 1998. But in the last couple of years, some of the luster has been lost. Well, they've had decent seasons, true, but nothing remarkable, nothing extraordinary. Tonight, you're going to watch two young squads who are trying to go from here back to here. They're both quite good, but both quite young. And that point really emphasized at the quarterback position, where tonight, Philip Fulmer of Tennessee will rotate two true freshmen, Brent Schaefer and Eric Ainge. And that is the Home Depot coach's decision. It was a little bit of a bold move with our football team, with our fans, with, with everything, but we felt like that was the right thing to do, and so uh, we pulled the trigger because short-term and long-term, they gave us a better chance to, to win. So it was kind of a no-brainer. Uh, Todd Blackley, Todd, I find that hard to believe. Well, I think the talent that they had was a no-brainer from the first day they stepped on campus, but what enabled Philip Fulmer to really pull the trigger was the maturity that these guys displayed through the summer, through scrimmages, mentally and emotionally. They were ready to play, and the two of them bring some real unique differences to the quarterback position. Brent Schaefer, the left-hander out of Deerfield Beach, Florida, can throw the football, but he's also a gifted runner and one of the two fastest guys on the team. Eric Ainge is a six-foot six pocket passer very adept at reading defenses calling things out and throwing the ball with accuracy they both played extremely well in the opening win against UNLV but tonight against the Florida Gators a much different animal and the Gators are going to counter with a relative old man of course yeah. 19 year old sophomore Chris Lee yeah, he's an old man because he has 10 career starts under his belt and the thing that stands out to me about Chris Lee he's an accurate thrower whether he throws out of the pocket or whether he's moving on the run but his boys last year we we saw this guy play great in visiting team stadiums and big games in the SEC. The crowd here at Neyland Stadium tonight will not affect Chris Lee. And by watching him last week against Eastern Michigan, he's ready to take his game to a new level. And it will be a thunderously loud crowd, as is the custom in Knoxville. Back with a kick in just a moment. Stadium is ninth-ranked Florida takes on 13th-ranked Tennessee. 
And here come the Volunteers running through the tee. jumped the gun. The Florida Gators were supposed to be the second to take the field. They came out early. But they're both here, and they are both ready for battle. We'll return with the kickoff right after this. This will be the 34th meeting between these two teams. Not that many in the series history. 18 to 15, Florida Legion. Uh, an ironic footnote on this pristine evening. The road team has won each of the last four games. One of these beautiful pictures in high definition being brought to you tonight by Argent. Florida won the toss. They have deferred the option until the second half. Tennessee. We'll receive and Matt Petrovich, who is a linebacker, seconding as a kickoff specialist. <laughs> Petrovich had eight tackles on uh, special teams kickoffs last year, and he already has one this year. Larkins is one of the deep men, flanked on either side by Wade and Tinsley. Corey Larkins. Matt Petrovich to kick for the Gators. Larkins awaits it for the Volunteers. Larkins from the seven. And he avoids the first contact, manages to score it out to the 24-yard line. And one of the 18-year-old freshmen will get the first snap. Brent Schaefer from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Had a, a magnificent debut here two weeks ago when they won against UNLV. He fumbled when hit from the blind side on the first series, but came back, showed great composure, wound up 7-10 for 123, and he is as uh, nifty with his feet as he is with his arm. Yeah, I mean, he, he literally is one of the fastest guys on this team, something the Florida defense very aware of. Tony Brown starts in motion, number 81. There's a play fake. Schaefer, the lefty, will tuck it and run. And this is where he gives them a, an extra dimension. He caught and dropped for a gain of two. And time now for the ballpark Frank starting lineups. Let's check this uh, Tennessee offensive line. It's a young one, although Munoz is a four-year starter. Rob Smith, Jason Westford, Cody Douglas, and Aaron Sears. Cedric Houston gets the start with Corey Anderson, Tony Brown, and Han in the wideouts, and Justin Reed is the tight end. Here's the handoff to Houston, bounces it to the left. Good pursuit defensively by Channing Crowder for Florida. And the uh, Florida defense, you just met Channing Crowder, the sophomore who led the team in tackles last year and last week. Up front, it's Cohen Thomas, Ray McDonald, and Jeremy Mincy, a junior college transfer. Crowder in the middle is flanked by Earl Everett and Travis Harris, and it's a very young secondary. Something both teams have in common. D. Webb and Herring, loss of one, it's third and seven. They're trying to change the play for Brent Schaefer on the sidelines. Randy Sanders and the play clock down inside of four right now. I don't think he's going to get this off. Well, he does just before the play clock expired. Here's Schaefer on the line. Tony Brown, first down at the 37-yard line. And I talked about the poise and the maturity that these two freshman quarterbacks showed. There's a great example of it. The play clock is going down. Brent Schaefer knows what the play clock is. He knows how much time he has. And right at one second, he gets the ball snapped. And he makes a big throw on third and seven for the conversion. Kind of a safe pass. Two backs in the backfield. 
and he finds the open receiver, his possession receiver, Tony Brown. Tony Brown from Lauderdale Lakes, Florida, and Brent Schaefer is from Deerfield Beach, Florida. And Tony Brown helped recruit Brent Schaefer to this ball club. A gain of 11, first down at the 37. See, this is a little play, uh, uh, this is a page out of the Florida playbook. Come up and line up, see what the defense is in, look to the sideline and change the play. That time it took too long, and Schaefer had to call timeout. Timeout for Philip Fulmer and the Volunteers of Tennessee. 12.46 to go, first quarter. Scoreless first quarter, Philip Fulmer, the dean of SEC coaches, has spent much of his life in Knoxville. He played here late 60s, early 70s. Ron Zook in his third year as the head coach of the Florida Gators. And a first down and 10. Here's Schaefer bobbling the ball, rolls out to his right, picks it up, and uh, tries to make something out of a little. He's out of bounds. Chased there by Jeremy Mincy, number 57. Well, Schaefer gives this team a dimension on the ground that perhaps Eric Gaines doesn't. And uh, as a footnote, the team that has rushed for more yards in the game has won 12 of the last 14. And I think the, the real key in this game tonight is going to be the defensive front sevens. Which one can control the running game of the other team? Both these teams want to run to protect their young quarterbacks and stay two-dimensional. Which defensive front seven can be the most physical tonight? And Tennessee, over the course of the evening, will use... Probably four running back. Fumble, Tinsley drops it. Yep. Scramble, and the Gators have recovered. They tried to go with the trick play early in the game, and it was snuffed out. And I think that's why the fumble was caused, because Florida had it so well defended that the man receiving Tinsley, when he was going to receive the ball, he was looking at the defense. Florida came across the line and had it defended, and it was not a good exchange between Schaefer and Tinsley and the Gators in great field position. D. Webb, number 15, recovers it after Jeremy Mincy in only his second game at Florida forced the fumble on the reverse. The team with the fewer turnovers is 9-3. and three. Play fake. Chris Leap looks deep, has a man down the sidelines just over his outstretched arms. I, I love the call, though. Larry Fedora, the new offensive coordinator, goes right after it. After the turnover, go for the touchdown. Just a little overthrown. Here's Chris Leak, 19 years of age. Came on as a starter. He did not start this game last year as a true freshman. Engel Martin was the starter. Leak got the start a week later against Kentucky and wound up with a fine season. Ball on the Tennessee 34, second down. Blitz coming. Leak inside to O.J. Small. He slips a tackle, comes right, and is uh, apparently gotten enough for the first down. Now let's check the... And there is a player down back uh, at the 47-yard line. Gator offensive line, Colin, Butler, DeGory, Rissler, and Randy Hand. Seatric Basin, Billy Latsko in the backfield, Dallas Baker, Caldwell, the wideouts, and David Kenner is the tight end who replaces the uh, All-American Ben Troop. This is not a good sign for the Tennessee football team either. It appears to be Kevin Simon, their starting middle linebacker, who is one of the real leaders in heart and soul. It looks like their left knee that they're looking at, and this is a guy who has had injury problems. He had ankle surgery in 2002. He had knee surgery from a senior, an injury as a senior in high school. He's rushing the quarterback on the blitz, and... Uh, just looks like he fought, fell awkwardly rushing against Randy Hand, the right tackle. He dove up in the air, and it looks like when he comes down on his left leg, he just landed kind of awkwardly. Well, the training staff, doctors are out tending to Kevin Simon, and we'll take a break. Kevin Simon on the Tennessee bench, the junior from Walnut Creek, California, who played at Concord de La Salle. And the defensive line, you see them, Harrelson, Mahalona, Harrell, and Neal. Linebackers, Mitchell, Simon was there. Johnny Poe has taken his place. And Burnett, and a very young secondary, Wade and Hefney at the corners, Allen and Brandon Johnson at the safeties. 
First down and 10 after the last play. Well, O.J. Small had to come off the field for a uniform problem, probably a chin strap, and they had to substitute another receiver in there on that running play, but it didn't seem to affect the execution of the play for Florida. See, Patrick Faison gets the toss and comes right. See, the thing about it, Tennessee beat Florida last year in Gainesville, but the two primary weapons on this Florida offense, Chris Leak, the quarterback, and Seattle Faison, were pretty much non-factors in the game last year in Gainesville. They are big-time players right now. Leak toward the sideline. No, he was out of bounds. Catch made by Jamel Cornelius, and the coverage from a true freshman, Jonathan Hefney, number 33. Take a look at what these two guys did in the game last year. Chris Leak was not the starter, came in 9 of 12, threw an interception. Tedrick Mason, was a, uh, he was a non-factor. Three carries, eight yards. I'll guarantee you, he may get three carries in this possession right here. I remember that he had some issues with playing time shortly after that and came on strong at the end of the season. Third down. Tennessee's blitzing. Handoff facing. Big hole. Dances left inside the 10. Helmet comes off. He holds on to the ball. A 13-yard game. See, Florida, the way they like to run the football is they like to spread you out, put the quarterback in the shotgun, and then open up creases for Faison and Deshaun Wynn. Nice blocking by the line. Andre Caldwell, the wide receiver, with a nice block inside and a nice call on third down with the running play to get the conversion. Basin over 100 yards in the season opener last week. The delayed season opener, that was his second career game in excess of 100. First and goal, Florida in the early going. Here's Leak. Right side, caught, small, touchdown, Florida. O.J. Small. Six catches last week. His first goes for six here. Second. And one thing that Philip Fulmer is going to have to think about, and John Chavis, no pressure on Chris Leak in that possession. You can't give a quarterback this good and this accurate, Chris Leak, that much time to find his receiver. O.J. Small is a wide receiver, but he lined up in the tight end position, and he's a big target coming across the middle of the field, and Leak found him for the score. Now the extra point attempt from Matt Leach, who has hit his last 55 in a row. Make it 56. O.J. Small. Five-yard catch off the arm of number 12, Chris Leak. And Florida takes an early lead. Six plays, 34 yards. It only took 75 seconds. Here's Larkins drifting back. He'll take it midway into the end zone. Touchback comes out to the 20-yard line. And there's a flag down while we await that. Let's check in with the newest member of our commentary team. A pleasure to welcome Tracy Wilson. Tracy. Thanks, Vern. Well, Kevin Simon, one of the veterans on this Tennessee defense, was taken into the locker room to evaluate a left knee sprain. He is questionable as to whether he will return in the second half. Back to you. All right, Tracy, thank you. And let's uh, take another look at that injury. Uh, he's coming from the right side. He's blitzing from his linebacker position at the bottom of the screen. And just when he comes down on the ground, he just landed on his left leg awkwardly. And this is a guy who has just, uh, just really battled injuries. Last year, he was not healthy through most of the season and then uh, was 100% this year. He and Kevin Burnett. And, well, that defense will definitely miss his presence in the middle. As Penn wagers the referee, it just uh, indicated that there was a holding call. Holding 44 on the receiving team. The foul occurred during the kick. The penalty would have been enforced on the kickoff. Therefore, Florida has declined. First down. Penalty called on Omar Gaither, number 44. One of the changes this year, they're identifying the players' numbers of who commit fouls for us. So, and everybody else here. A la the NFL. That's a much welcome change. Mm -hmm. Jomo Fagan starts in motion, number 84. Here's a handoff. It goes to Cedric Houston, number 21. And he bursts up the middle. Out across the 30 to the 31, a gain of 12. 
Well, the touchdown pass from Leak to Small, worth another look. Well, I want you to watch a couple things here uh, because it was interesting. Now, this is a very young secondary for Tennessee. So, first of all, they're going to concentrate, and you can see some confusion when these guys are moving. Here's O.J. Small, and he's going to run across the field and get lost. Everybody's paying attention to the three wide receivers. You see they're a little confused. They're mixed up, and O.J. Small comes right into the middle, and nobody picks him up. And it was well-designed, and Chris Leak likes throwing to O.J. Small. Six catches last Last week, two already today. And Jomo Fagan stays on the field. Here's Houston. He's got some room up the middle and manages to get across the 35. Channing Crowder makes the tackle, and that gives us a moment to go back to New York and Tim Brando. Tim? All right, Vern, good to hear from you. UCLA, we talked about the defenses being ahead of the offenses in the SEC early. Not in the Pac-10. Maurice Drew, four rushes, 169 yards, three touchdowns. Here's one of them, 24-20. We're talking in this early portion of the second quarter. Vern, some of my flies in the ointment have better defenses. <laughs> oh, my gosh, the first break, and we get a fly in the ointment. Here's Houston, spin move. Near midfield goes Cedric Houston. That's a gain of 14. Well, in this series now, Tennessee, forgetting the reverses and the razzle-dazzles, they're running inside. Lead with the fullback, give it to Cedric Houston, break a few tackles. Randy Sanders told me before the game, for us to run the ball, we've got to control that triangle, the two defensive tackles and the middle linebacker Channing Crowder in order to have a chance to run the football. In this possession, they're doing it. Houston averaging seven yards per carry in the early going. First down at the 50. Houston, nice little dart to the left and advance to the right. And Cedric Houston, who uh, was injured, an ankle injury in that first game two weeks ago against UNLV, it looked quite serious. Yeah turned out not to be. It scared him worse than it hurt him. And, and this is a good sign for Cedric Houston and for the Tennessee coaches because his history had been run really well, get nicked up a little bit, be out for a while. When he comes back, he's not the same runner. But so far, coming back off that ankle injury, he looks pretty strong. And he gives way to Gerald Riggs Jr. now to the 31 for 21. And Riggs inside the 45 to the 44. Corey Bailey, Stephen Harris make the tackles. Third down and inside of five yard lines. Now this is where you have to be aware of the mobility of Brent Schaefer if you're the Florida defense. Charlie Strong, defensive coordinator said, when Schaefer's in, we need to contain him. When Ainge is in, we need to pressure him. They need to contain Brent Schaefer on this third down play. Now they have moved from their own 20 now inside the 45. Third down conversion 60% last week or two weeks ago. Now Tinsley goes right side. Here's Schaefer with the play fake. He'll run it, gets a quick block from Kinsley. Oh, that was a dandy. The block was on Jeremy Mincy, as uh, you could almost sense that Tinsley was trying to make up for the yeah. fumble. Well, if he doesn't make that block, Schaefer doesn't get the first down. You know, some people were saying that Brent Schaefer is like Michael Vick in an orange jersey. I think he's got similar speed, maybe not as fast as Mike Vick, but he can flat out run. And a first down and 10 at the 39-yard line after the block from Tinsley. One set back, three wideouts now for the Volunteers. And off, they try that tackle, and Riggs is hit, but he manages to move forward to the 36-yard line. Gerald Riggs, Jr. Well, Riggs has had a great summer camp, and uh, in a lot of ways, he looks better than Cedric Houston. Almost lost the football there, but he just has a few lapses here and there, particularly with the protections. I mean, they're a little more consistent in there with Cedric Houston at this point in the season. You see last season's numbers. He had a career best of 79 yards in the win against UNLV. Now the change. Brent Schaefer. Play clock's down to three again. Got it. Riggs, first double right side, and has a first down 
for the Volunteers at the 25 on another 12-yard game. Yep, 12 yards, and this right side of the offensive line, two new starters over there, Cody Douglas, the right guard, Aaron Sears, the right tackle. They feel that these guys are inexperienced, but they're more athletic and they're more physical than the guys that they had in there last year. They think this offensive line will be better because they're better athletically and they're tough guys. And, and right there on that run, they showed it. Rushing yards now 55 for the Volunteers. And again, Brent Schaefer looks over at Randy Sanders. Randy Sanders is doing a nice job of calling the plays at the line of scrimmage when he sees how the Florida defense is lining up, particularly in the run game. That's on the left side. And a broken tackle. Riggs to the 13. They're pounding him right here on this drive. I mean, they're nothing fancy. Single back. A tight end and a couple receivers, and they're just they're just running right at them. They're challenging the Florida front seven, and they're winning right now. This time they ran behind Munoz, their captain, number 77. Well, in their win two weeks ago over UNLV, and admittedly UNLV is not Florida, they had six drives at 80 yards or more. This is the tenth play of the current drive, and every one of them has been on the ground. Again, three wide outs out of the gun this time. And Schaefer up the middle. He is elusive. <laughs> He's fun to watch. Really a nice call here. You've been running, you've been running, you've been running. Now you fake it in there to Riggs, and you let your quarterback keep it. He's the extra running back in here. Fake the draw. Quarterback trap. He's following Munoz through there. And he shows the ability to break some tackles as well. Six foot two, 195 pounder. Randy Sanders, a former Tennessee quarterback, offensive coordinator. He replaced David Cutliffe, now the head coach at Ole Miss. Cutcliffe. David Lincoln is in as an eligible receiver, and the Volunteers have to use their second timeout. It's been an impressive drive. It's interrupted by the timeout for the moment. Jabari Davis, five touchdowns and 39 carries against the Gators. He's their short yardage back. You may not see him in any other situations other than short yardage, but he's in there right now. He's rather large. And he's got a large man in front of him at fullback. Here's Jabari Davis. A dive, he gets one yard. And a moment ago, the, the, the newest member of this Florida coaching staff, an energetic guy named Trooper Taylor, trying to rouse the troops on the sideline. Played well, he, defensive back at Baylor. He has really brought some, some youthful energy to the coaching staff, to the running back position. I think all the running backs have shown improvement. Replaced Woody McCorvey, who went to be with Sylvester Croom as the offensive coordinator at Mississippi State, and he's been a nice addition to this Tennessee staff. Davis still the deep man behind Corey Anderson. They're in the eye. Here's Davis. Touchdown, Tennessee. Make it six career touchdowns for Jabari Davis against the Gators. Philip Fulmer told us yesterday he likes this offensive line, and this drive right here shows it. Run it right down the throat of the, Phillip, of the Florida Gator defense. All runs, no messing around with passing, just run the football right at the Gator defense and end up in the end zone. That's the 21st career touchdown for Jabari Davis. Now James Wilhite with the extra point. Got it. Six times against UNLV, they went 80 yards or more. Tonight, they go 80 yards in 12 plays, and we're notched at seven. And Wilhite will kick off. Caldwell and Chad Jackson of the deep man. This is Andre Caldwell wearing number five. He's tackled as he crosses the 30 by Jabari Davis, who just scored the touchdown. I'm going to go back and show you a block on the touchdown. Aaron Sears, the new starter at right tackle. Here he is right here. Now he is going to block in here on Channing Crowder, who is the heart and soul of the Florida defense. And this is physical, in-your-mouth football. Aaron Sears, 
hits Channing Crowder, and Crowder can't do anything about it. Well, last three years, Jabari Davis, five touchdowns, and he gets one tonight. He's got six in his career. Here's Leak. The handoff, they come right side. And Faison is out across the 35 near the 37. Well, the one thing about the Gator offense, they should be good and rested. I mean, they were on the bench a long time on that last drive. And it's kind of a cool night. They're not accustomed to this kind of cool weather down in Gainesville. So uh, no problems with fatigue for the Gator offense. Well, SEC road games last year saw a very gaudy statistic. Second down and four. Tennessee brings five. Flip out left side to Faison. He's got a blocker in front. Jonathan Cullen. And a flag is Late thrown flag. about the time the tackle is made. And while we sort that out, let's go back to New York. And once again, here's Tim Brando. Fellas, it could be a record-breaking night for Maurice Drew. Ten rushes, 220 yards, four touchdowns. The last one here for 15 yards. The all-time record was set by Deshaun Foster, 301 yards against uh, Washington back in 2001. All right, Tim, thank you. You know, Tim was talking about the defenses in the Pac-10. There's only one school that plays defense. That's USC. I don't <laughs> think anybody else plays defense out in that conference. That uh, penalty is against Florida. It negates the first down. Ron Zook. In his third year, succeeding Steve Spurrier, each of the previous two years, remarkable similarity. Eight wins, five defeats, and lose in the Outback Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to improve things to satisfy the Florida fans. Yeah, I mean, both these teams are so similar. I mean, back-to-back -back Outback losses for Florida, back-to-back -back Peach Bowl losses for Tennessee, and a timeout right now for Chris Lee. Second down and nine. That's the first time out used by the Gators. 7-7 in Knoxville. On CBS. Second and nine. Leak. Empty backfield. The Gory will snap it back. Looks like Tennessee will bring three and drop eight. That is the plan. Now they bring it four. And O.J. Small makes the catch inside. That will be short of the first down and brings up a third down. You know, it's just amazing to me how times have changed with this rivalry and with teams playing Florida. I mean, Tennessee against Florida is starting a true freshman at one corner, Jonathan Hefney. They're starting a, st a sophomore at the other corner who was a wide receiver last year and a new free safety in this ballgame. How many times against a Steve Spurrier pass offense would you ever do that? But Tennessee <laughs> is going with youth back there against this offense. Third and two. Here's Leak, quick flip left side. They've got the first down, Faison out of the backfield. Nice read, nobody accounted for Faison. You know, normally when a team blitzes, you expect the back to stay in and help with protection. But that time they free released Faison and nobody picked him up and they got the easy conversion on third down. Now Deshaun Wynn uh, will come on on first down, replacing Faison who asked for a little bit of a breather. It was the intent of Ron Zook going into this season to rotate the yep. backs. But he made a decision last week that Faison is the starter and will get the majority of snaps during the game and in practice. But Deshaun Wynn is in there right now. Three-man three, three man line for the Tennessee defense. And Chris Leak changing the protection assignments. Deshaun Wynn spilled as he gets near the line of scrimmage. Well, a poignant story involving these two teams and Chris Leak's mom and dad, Curtis and Karen Leak. There they are. You see that Karen Leak is wearing a Tennessee visor. Their oldest son, C.J. Leak, a sixth-year senior on this team, was projected to be the starting quarterback for this team until Philip Fulmer decided to go with the rotating freshman. He's now a fourth-team linebacker. Second down, 11. See, this no huddle allows Chris Leak to stay at the line of scrimmage and change the play and not worry about the play clock. They don't huddle. They call the play at the line of scrimmage after they see what the defense does. Deshaun Wynn gets the handoff, and he uh, picks up two. 
Now, C.J. Leak, a 60-year senior, began his career at Wake Forest four years and three days ago. He suffered a, a knee injury, led to his decision to transfer here, sat out. I know you spent time talking with him this week. Yeah, I did, and I was really impressed with him because the, the guy has just had a great attitude about the change here. I mean, he's a competitor. He'd love to play. He's on defense now, but he is so proud of his little brother. And uh, I mean, that is so genuine. I mean, you spend some time with them. These two guys care an awful lot about each other. On third down and 10, here's Leak goes deep left side. Good coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off deep by Jason Allen, number 18. And that is only the second interception thrown by Chris Leak in the last 17 quarters of play. See, Jason Allen was the starting cornerback against UNLV, but the run support was pretty shaky, so they moved him to free safety. But in dime defense, they put him back as a corner, and he was on the slot covering right there. Here's Jason Allen in the slot. He's not playing safety. Now he's playing man-to-man -man corner, and he's very good at this. He's an outstanding football player, either as a safety or a corner, and made the pick. Turnovers are now even at one and one, and the new quarterback for Tennessee, another 18-year-old freshman. He turned 18 in June. Here is Eric Ainge. Play fake. He'll throw on first down. Deep left side. Beautiful timing play, and he finds Chris Hannon, number 13. Eric Ainge from Hillsboro, Oregon. 6'6", the name is familiar. His uncle is Danny Ainge. His dad and mother, Doug and Diane, are here. Said he... Uh, he wanted a big-time program. He's found one. Yes, he has. There's mom and dad. That's Doug Ainge and Diane Ainge. They made the trip back here two weeks ago from uh, the suburb of Portland, and they're back again. They're going to get a few air miles this year. Here's the handoff, left side. This is Cedric Houston, who's back on there. And D. Webb, number 15. Well, against UNLV, here are the numbers, yeah. Todd. Pretty and, impressive for both. And I don't know that Philip Fulmer could have scripted it any better for these two guys. They both played. They both played well. They both encouraged each other. They both bring a little something different for a defense to prepare for. Eric Ainge is six foot six. He's very calm. He reads defenses extremely well. And he throws it with great accuracy. That was our Argent quarterback comparison. And here's another broken tackle. Houston. We have a problem. Yes, sir. And the problem is they can't get around Anthony Munoz, who's leading on that play as we see Houston limp off a little bit. But they're running behind Anthony Munoz. He locks up his guy. And there you see it right there, the big block by Anthony, or Michael, I should say, looked like his dad, Anthony, on that play. And Cedric Houston with another big run. Houston limps off a little bit. Gerald Riggs hurries on. And Houston, who came as Trooper Taylor, gives him a couple slaps. Wake up. You're a heavyweight, not a middleweight. Trooper Taylor, who is a bundle of energy. Boy, he is a curveball for this coaching staff. Yes, he is. He's a, a, a dramatic departure from the normal demeanor of Philip Fulmer's longtime staff. We have reached the end of the first quarter. We'll return to Neyland after this message and a word from your local station. Tennessee quarterbacks have been impressive, but so also has been this Tennessee offensive line. And we're tied at seven as we begin quarter number two. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, and Tracy Wolfson from Knoxville. High formation on first and ten from the Florida 45. Eric Ainge looks over at Randy Sanders, offensive coordinator. Corey Larkins is on the field now, number 23. So he is the fourth running back used. Flags are down. And he's going to go against uh, the Florida Gators. It'll be an offside as Larkins gets his first carry of the night. Well, we talked coming in, Todd, about uh, the emphasis on the ground game, how yeah. significant that has been. Pretty impressive ground game so far for Tennessee. Well, 19 runs. They've only thrown the ball two times, and that's old-style Tennessee football. And the best way to protect young quarterbacks and take pressure off them is establish a good running game. And, and right now, this big Tennessee offensive line, even though they're young, they're much bigger than the Florida defensive line, and they're just kind of leaning on them right now. And they are really pushing on this Florida front seven right now. Well, over the years, 12 out of the last 14 games, 
the team which has run for the most yards in the games has won. And uh, you see since the national championship that the numbers for Tennessee have decreased. Look at the rather gaudy total, 211 yards per game in 98. Well, that would... They got it going tonight right now. And uh, again, this offensive line for Tennessee averages 313 pounds. The defensive line for the Florida Gators, 280 pounds. And they are just pushing them back right now. At last flag, a personal foul against Florida, 15 yards. Here's Larkins, darts left, and scoots out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Corey Larkins. So they come at you with Houston at 220, Riggs at 220, Larkins at 205, and then the huge load, Davis, at 230. Yeah, when they get inside the five-yard line, they go with Davis. But uh, a nice rotation right now for Randy Sanders, all the guys making the most out of their carries and both quarterbacks doing a nice job of calmly checking out the Florida defense and getting them into the right running plays. On first down, handoff Larkins starts left, comes back right, down at the 16. Well, we talked a little bit about C.J. Leak and Rick Clawson, whose brother Casey, of course, was a four-year starter here, was listed as the backup when fall drills began. He transferred in from LSU. And uh, the coaching staff and the other players talk about how great Rick Lawson yeah. and C.J. Leak have been uh, adapting to the loss of their roles. Now that, that's asking a lot for those older guys to give way to a couple 18-year-old freshmen, but they're doing a great job of helping those guys play. And a timeout is called again by Tennessee. That's the third. They're out of timeouts, and we've just begun the second quarter. 7-7. Seven, seven. Whatever they can to make these kids get better. All right, Tracy, thank you. It's second down, and here is Eric Ains drills it. Caught. Caught down. Wow. Justin Reed, number 87. Well, you tell young quarterbacks, don't try to do that. You roll it to your left, you're a right-handed quarterback, and he's throwing back to the inside of the field against a fast defense. No matter, a perfect throw by Eric Kane. Mm, mm, mm. That was pretty. Watch Eric Ainge come out this way, and then he's going to throw back to his tight end, back to the inside of the field. Justin Reed, the tight end, watch, back to the middle of the field. That's so hard to do. And he throws it right to him. Justin Reed, who started his career as a backup punter, now the starting tight end, the extra point is up and good. Well, we get a little bit of Schaefer, and then we get a little bit of Ainge. <laughs> the Gators got a little bit of angst right now. All of which results in an ouch. 14 to 7. Ainge to Reed for six. Happiness on the sidelines. Here's Will Height. Nice kick. Great bounds. Andre Caldwell tried to do a tap dance and a little ballet movement as well. Well, Andre Caldwell had a nice return the last time. This time they kick him right to the sidelines. He might have been better off letting that one see if it would bounce out of bounds, but a perfect directional kick by Will Height. All of which results in a first down and 10. At the three. Well, this is where the poise of Chris Lee needs to really assert itself. I mean, that's the one thing I noticed about him as a freshman. Very unflappable no matter where he's playing. Grayson may be the line of scrimmage. We go back to New York and Tim Brando. Timmy? Vernon Todd, tough news for Alabama's Brody Crawl. You remember his senior year, he missed it because of an ACL. He had a shoulder injury last year. Now it could be another knee injury carried off against Western Carolina. And uh, on the same drive, Ken Darby takes it in from 27 yards out. 38-0 Bama over Western Carolina. Of course, you guys see Alabama against Arkansas next week, perhaps without Brody Croyle. Well, that is really tough news. Brody Croyle off to a good start. Here's another fine defensive play. Omar Gaither, number 44.
Tennessee guessing run. John Chavis attacking the line of scrimmage with his linebackers. Omar Gaither shoots in there and gets the play behind the line of scrimmage. Third and long now for Chris Lee from see, his own end zone. See what John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, has in mind here for the Volunteers. Third and ten, Leak from the checkerboard. Four-man rush, they stunt. Little swing pass, facing. Gets a good block, he's got a first down. Wow. Plus a bunch. Nice play, but you know, Chris Leak almost dropped that snap. He wasn't quite ready for that snap, but they're able to convert the screen pass for a big first down. Tennessee's coming with pressure. And they threw the screen right to the side of the pressure. You see the, the snap kind of caught Leak by surprise. He's able to corral it and then make the throw. Well executed. Gain of 21, a first down. Here's the handoff left side. He's facing number four. And he gets out to the 29-yard line. No matter what Florida does on this possession, that was a huge conversion because I don't think that Gator defense was ready to come back on the field against this physical Tennessee offense and a very hot quarterback in Eric Ainge. I mean, they needed to make that conversion, if for nothing else, just to let their defense rest a little longer. Five-yard gain, second down and five at the 29. Latsko and Deshaun Wynn are in the backfield now. This is Billy Latsko. A fake leak finds Latsko, but a great defensive job by Jason Allen. Not fooled for a second. Not a bit. Jason Allen again moved from corner during the off week to free safety because they needed a better quarterback in their defensive secondary. Somebody that could communicate. And Jason Allen is an outstanding player. And he's right here. He reads this play all the way. I mean, he's got his eyes on the quarterback. He sees the bootleg, and he makes the sure tackle out in space. Kevin Burnett comes up to help number two. They're two of the six volunteer captains. And it's third and five after no gain on the last play. Tennessee again with three down. Looks like they might bring five. They bring four. That one's a little high, but the catch is made at the 40 by Dallas Baker, number 81. Now, Todd, let's uh, take another look at the screen play that went for 21 yards. Yeah, it was the third down play before that last conversion. And uh, watch the patience of Faison. He waits till those big guys get out in front. And both the linemen got blocks, and Dallas Baker got a good block as well. I mean, it was very well executed to get out of trouble. Flags are down. This will be a dead ball call. Prior, the ball was snapped prior to the ready to play signal. Five yards down. Well, that's interesting. The ball was snapped before the ready to play signal. You know, one of the things they want to do with no huddle offenses is give the defense time to substitute if they want to. They don't want an offense to be able to uh, to negate a defense's ability to change with formations or personnel groups. And so that was a, a five-yard penalty against Florida. Look at the play selection difference. Yep. Eight and 11. Under Ron Zook, uh, Florida has been almost 50-50 run pass. And here's the toss to Deshaun Wynn. Nice run around the right side. Now to the 41. Well, even though you've got Chris Leak, he's a talented thrower, you've got the tradition of throwing. You take a look at last year, they still averaged more rushes per game than passes, and then the games that they lost, particularly to Tennessee, down in Gainesville, and in the bowl game to Iowa, those were the two fewest game uh, rushing games that they had, and they got beat pretty handily. Second down and 10 after the five-yard game. Here's the pass into the flat, and it's called by... Andre Caldwell, he's across the 50 to the 48-yard line, the tackle made by Kevin Burnett. See, now I want to tell you one of the reasons why the play selection is different in this ballgame. For Tennessee, the, the, the run-oriented is to take the pressure off the quarterback, put the game on the hands and the shoulders of your offensive line. For Florida, they're going to throw more because you want the ball to be in Chris Leak's hands. He's the guy that's going to win this game for you with his decision-making and his accurate throwing. That was a gain of 12, a first down. Here's the uh, toss to Deshaun Wynn, the sophomore out of Cincinnati, Ohio. 14 to seven, turnovers are even at one apiece. Thus far, probably the most impressive facet of the game, the ground game of Tennessee. Yeah. 
and the response on this drive of Chris Leak and the Florida offense. Out of their own end zone, they convert third and 10, and now they're across the 50 going into Tennessee territory. Two big third down conversions on this current drive. This, the 10th play. Here's Leak. Changing the play completely. And communicating to all the guys up front. And very aware of the play clock, which is now under five. Wow. Here's Leak. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Oh. No, he was supposed to give the ball to Deshaun Wynn, and he missed the handoff. And when the reason I know that is because Deshaun Wynn turned around and looked at him like, what are you doing with the ball? <laughs> I'm supposed to have it. But that was not supposed to be a quarterback draw. Kevin Burnett came up number two and made the tackle. See, they just missed the exchange, and Wynn turns around and says, what are you doing? You throw it, I'll run it. Third and four. Florida, four of five on third down conversions. The biggest in this drive was third and 10 from the three. Tennessee brings three, but the pass inside is complete to the 36-yard line. O.J. Small. I think both offensive lines are playing well in this game. Tennessee's offensive line is playing great in the running game, pushing the Florida defense around. The Florida offensive line is doing an outstanding job protecting Chris Lee. In a loud stadium, they're making all the checks with a lot of hand signals and checks at the line of scrimmage, and they're protecting their quarterback brilliantly so far in the game. That's the third, third down conversion in this current drive. The biggest of which was the third and 10 from the three, a 21-yard game. Leak. That's the play they were supposed to do a minute ago when Leak missed the handoff. And Deshaun Wynn is hit at the 25, but he picks up another Florida first down. That play didn't look like it was going to go anywhere. I thought this one was going to get stopped in the backfield, but Deshaun Wynn was able to break a tackle. Omar Gaither had a shot at him and missed him. And Deshaun Wynn turned it into a nice play. But that time, they communicated it right, and Chris Leak made the exchange. Deshaun Wynn out. Faison's back in. A first down and 10 for Leak and the Gators. Not under center very much in this offense. A little different look. Play fake. Leak looks. Fires right side. Man is wide, wide open. open. Oh my. Andre Caldwell. A perfectly conceived play. Yeah, they went under center to get a good play action fake. Ed Zonbrecher told me this is the one area that Chris Leak has really improved, his play action faking. You don't see him miss wide receivers wide open. Now, maybe Caldwell should have got two hands up there to try to make the catch. He had to stretch out for it and just not able to pull it in. But well-designed play, but they came up empty. Out of the gun this time on second and ten. Here comes a volunteer blitz, Faison. Met at the line and driven down. And another helmet is loose on the ground. You know, in a game like this, when you get opportunities to make big plays, you have to take advantage of them. And that was a big play opportunity for Florida on that crossing route that they did not connect on. That would have been an easy touchdown for Caldwell. As it is now, another difficult third down and long for the Gators. Third and eight. Three wides to the right side, one of whom comes in motion now. That's O.J. Small wearing number 11. Here's Leak. He comes left side. Hands a man. It's Dallas Baker at the nine-yard line. Excellent job of blitz pickup by the line and the running back in the ballgame. Seatrick Faison did a great job of protecting his quarterback, and Chris Leak found the open receiver. They went single coverage. He out. Watch Faison pick up the blitz right in the middle of the protection, and it's an easy throw and catch. And how about the third down conversion? Unbelievable. Third and ten. They're four of four on this drive, which began at the three-yard three line. This is the 16th play of the drive. Leak scrambles. Pulls up, drills it. In the end zone, touchdown! Boy, he was close to the line of scrimmage, too, because he took off pretty good like he was going to run it, but he never left his eyes go from downfield with his receivers. Jamel Cornelius, number six. Faison does a, a nice job of picking up the blitz again on the inside, and this time Leak leaves the pocket. 
It looked like he was going to run, but his eyes never left downfield, and he shoots one into the Cornelius for the touchdown. Mm. What a drive. Matt Leach has hit 56 extra points in a row, and he's on to attempt this drive. 97 yards. That drive did everything that Ron Zook wanted. Number one, it rested his defense. Number two, it tied the score. And number three, it put some energy and some life back into this Florida football team. We're tied at 14, second quarter. Jamel Cornelius, first touchdown of his career. He's a sophomore from Fort Meade, Florida. And here's the kick from Petrovich. Drives it. Corey Larkins. Five yards back. Touchback. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Well, I have been waiting for, gee whiz, eight and a half months now for the half lap. trivia question of the night. Here's the question. Before Brent Schaefer, who was the last true freshman quarterback to start a game for the Vols? That's almost too easy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't even have to dig for that one. Which is fairly unusual. No. See Eric Ainge got a much longer rest than he wanted, but he did lead the Volunteers to a touchdown on his first series. Under his center, Jason Restwood. Here's the handoff to Houston. Houston back on the field. And uh, another look. At Chris Leak and Jamel Cornelius. Well, Chris Leak was so impressive in this drive. Starting from his own three and this touchdown pass, he never lost his composure. He never lost sight of his receivers in the end zone. The most impressive thing, Florida was four for four on third downs in that drive. And every time they hit one, not only did they pick it up, they made a big play with it. 21 yards, 13 yards, 13 yards, and 11 yards on third down. Second and seven here. Ainge with the change. Left side, caught. Quick flip to Chris Hannon. Well, we are uh, tied at 14. In the last six games, three wins apiece. Total points, look at that, four-point difference. And the touchdown, only mm -hmm. one different. The amazing thing to me in the last four years is that the road team right. has won each time. Third and three. There's Ainge, flag down. Well, before we get the uh, call, Monday on an all-new Late Show for the first time ever, Dave goes one-on-one -on -one with presidential candidate John Kerry. And Tuesday, Dave's got Dr. Phil right here on CBS. Now the road field advantage began in 2000 when Florida won a controversial game here. Uh, last year in Gainesville, big play at the halftime, Tennessee won. Two years ago in a thundering rainstorm, eight fumbles for Tennessee. Florida won 30 to 13. The 2001 game, of course, was the memorable game postponed because of the tragic events of September 11th and played in December down in, uh, in Gainesville. Tennessee won it by two. Here's the handoff and the sweep. Oh, my goodness. Fine defensive play. Yeah, and one of the first plays that we've seen where they've stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. Ray McDonald from his defensive tackle position shot through there and made a play. A sophomore out of Bell Glade, Florida. Take a look at Ray McDonald. He's just going to read it quick. Actually got his face mask tugged before he was uh, got to the ball carrier. Still able to make the play. That was a case where the Florida defense slanted the right way. They slanted to the direction of the run, and McDonald was able to beat his block and make the play. Ray McDonald, whose father, Ray Sr., was a wide receiver for the Gators back in the 70s. Second down. Here's Ainge. Pulls up, lets it go. Intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Holmes, number 49. And Holmes looking for blocking help. There's a missed tackle, and Holmes is down at the 30-yard line. Well, Eric Ainge got away with it once, throwing back 
rolling to his left and throwing back to the inside. This time, he didn't get away with it. A little more careless on this throw. For a right-handed quarterback, when you roll to your left, you got to get your shoulders around. You can't be drifting to the sidelines. Watch as he comes out here. He's going to try to throw it back in here, but the ball is just going to kind of sail on him. He doesn't get his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, and the ball sails on him, and a big pick for the Florida defense. Second turnover now for Florida. They recovered a fumble, picked off a pass. First down at the 30. Leak with a play fake, and it was a good one. All kinds of time. Same play, Same play to Caldwell. And this time, he's in for... No! Oh, my. I thought that was a touchdown. <laughs> Out of bounds at the one-foot line. I think maybe his feet got in, but the ball didn't on that one. And the ball has to cross the plane. But that was the exact same play action that he missed Caldwell on the last series. And again, Larry Fedora, right after the turnover, he did this earlier. Go for the kill. Go for the big play action. Perfect fake by Leak. And this time, he doesn't miss the wide-open Caldwell. Did the ball get across? No, his feet did, but the ball did not. The ball has to cross the plane, and the ref says no. Feet, yes. Ball, no. Ball inside the one-yard line for Florida. Sounds like the title of the book. <laughs> feet, yes. Ball, no. And other intriguing tales. Here's the handoff, and it becomes academic. Deshaun Wynn, touchdown. Two plays after the interception. And Florida goes back on top. I asked Ed Zonbrecker before the game, you know, what has Chris done better this year? And the, the first thing he said is his play action faking. Last year, he was thinking so much out there that that part of his game was not very good. This time, this year, his play action faking looks terrific. And Deshaun Wynn caps it off with the short touchdown run. Ed Zonbrecker, who was the offensive coordinator until the uh, offseason, Change made by Ron Zook, so John Brecker is now the quarterback coach. Larry Fedora took his place. Ron Zook telling us, and Larry Fedora confirming that the, one of the reasons for the change is that the personalities between uh, Zook and Fedora are quite comparable as the extra point is up and good. Ed Zonbrecker, who has coached a lot of fine quarterbacks, a little more placid in his approach. Turnover results in a Florida touchdown. They're up by seven hurry up but you can hurry up if you want to here is Petrovich with the kick and Larkins is chased back into the end zone again Petrovich with a very effective kickoff there's a flag down at the 31 yard line you know it's worth noting that uh, last year the Florida Gators led the SEC in takeaways 30 takeaways and tonight, two that have led to two touchdowns. Both of those turnovers, they got the ball inside the 30-yard line, and they scored touchdowns as a result. Coming into this season with a new secondary, they only had four interceptions returning on this Florida defense in the secondary. And they got one out of their safety, Terrence Holmes, tonight. And we'll hear from Penn Wagers now. During the kick, holding 48 on the receiving team. Penalties declined. Again, this penalty, if accepted, would have gone to the kickoff and re -kicked. They declined that option. First down. All right. And it's time now to answer our Atlanta. trivia question. Before Brent Schaefer, who was the last true freshman quarterback to start a game for the Bulls, and it was Casey Clawson, 2000 versus Alabama. Continue that thought because we talked with Philip Fulmer and Randy Sanders about this whole concept of starting freshmen. Uh, first down and 10. Schaefer is back in. The handoff goes left to Gerald Riggs, and he doesn't get much. Uh, Casey Clawson out of California in the year 2000, Philip uh, Fulmer said, would have been the starting quarterback as a true freshman at the start of the season, but he had a shoulder injury. Yeah, had a shoulder injury, and... Uh didn't get as many reps in practice. They ended up starting out with A.J. Suggs, and uh, eventually Casey Clawson did become the guy. Second down and 10. Schaefer and handoff. Riggs. That's going to bring up a third down and seven. Well, the first true freshman since freshman eligibility reinstated in the mid-'70s in this conference was Wayne Peace of Florida. For the volunteers, Heath Schuler. Peyton Manning, but not the first game. And Casey Clawson. And you see their uh, efforts in their first 
full game as a quarterback. A big third down right here now for Brent Schaefer. We talked about that Florida defense needing a rest when their offense had the long drive. Tennessee's defense was on the field a long time the last couple series as well. Here's Schaefer. Gets it in the hands of Riggs. Goes left and he'll be short of the first down. So we're going to see the All-American punter Dustin Colquitt for the first time tonight. And a little different bounce in the step of the Florida defense. Their offense has kind of taken some control against the Tennessee defense. They're rested, and they feel a little bit better about themselves coming off the field the last two possessions. Now, here is the All-American of the Cole Quitt family who have uh, meant so much to Tennessee football. First punt of the night. He is. Yes. Right here. He's a lefty. And he can boom it. Averaging 51.3. Bobbles that one. And this is a line drive punt taken at the 32 yard line by Burnell Brown. And number 16 is chased out of bounds at the 39 yard line. A 40 yard punt. Seven on the return. Nothing about that was very pretty. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson for a look at an SEC moment presented by Sonic. Burn 1998 provided one of the most exciting finishes in the history of this rivalry. Jeff Hall's 41-yard field goal on the Vols' first possession in overtime gave Tennessee a 20-17 lead. Florida then missed a 32-yarder and a chance to tie the game in the Vols. Took the upset win over the second-ranked Gators as Tennessee would go undefeated and win the national championship. Indeed, Trace, thank you. First down and 10, Florida. Here's Leak with a handoff and nothing doing in this play. That, uh, that missed field goal resulted in what I think was one of the great, great radio calls in the history of volunteer broadcasting. John Ward, no sir Ree. This press box Classic. is uh, dedicated to John Ward, many times the sportscaster of the year. And of course, whenever you talk about broadcasters in Tennessee, you better mention Lindsey Nelson. Mm -hmm. Passed away five years ago. One of the legends of this craft. Second down and 11. Here's Leak again with time. And he's found Cornelius. And Jamel Cornelius close to the yardage needed for the first down at the 49-yard line. Well, John Chavis is trying to just pressure Chris Leak with three or four rushers, and they're not able to get to him. Now, this offense and this formation spread the defense out. And if you want to try to pressure, you got to kind of commit extra guys. And he's got a young secondary. I don't think he wants to put some of these young corners on an island at this point in the game. But they are not able to generate much pressure at all against Chris Lee. That's going to be just short. Well, John Chavis, uh, defensive star for the gate, uh, for the uh, volunteers back in the, in the 70s. We're going to do him a favor tonight and not show you the picture of him as a player. <laughs> Hair was a little bit different. Yeah, he had a different kind of hairstyle. We've shown that <laughs> over the years. His most vivid memory of this series was a ball. 21-14, third and inches with just over two minutes to go in a really scintillating first half. There's the handoff facing appears to have enough. Florida Todd seven of eight yeah. on third down conversions and Chris Leak for the ball game. He had the one interception earlier but he's 14 of 18 146 yards and two touchdowns and he has been outstanding on third down. I mean he they just have not been able to rattle him at all. And again we saw this guy play at LSU at Arkansas and then against Georgia in Jacksonville all teams that were ranked higher than Florida and he just played outstanding on the road and he's playing that way again here in Knoxville on first down and 10 143 to go here's Leak out of the backfield facing nice play in the open field yes it was that's Jonathan Hefney number 33 the freshman you know the Earthling halftime report scores and highlights with uh, Tim and Spencer back in our New York uh, studios 
Jonathan Hefney who made that play they really think he's got a chance to be a great player he's a true freshman he's from Rock Hill South Carolina he played at Hargrave Military Academy up in Virginia last season starting as a true freshman out on that island that corner position here's the toss to face it. he's got Lasko in front and a nice job coming up Paris Harrelson number 98 was the first one there that's a loss of three Florida has not been very good running the football from traditional formation with the fullback. And again, they didn't get much on this one. Harrelson with the play behind the line of scrimmage. Their best runs have come from the shotgun when they spread that Tennessee defense out and find a little crease for the draw or the zone play. Florida uses one of its uh, allotment of timeouts. They have one remaining. And we've got 54 seconds to go in the first half of play. Ron Zook doesn't want to do anything foolish at this point. I mean, they have battled in this game. They've gotten themselves in the lead. And uh, no point in, in doing anything to give Tennessee a chance to score again. Remember, right at the end of the half, a Hail Mary changed the momentum in the game last year in Gainesville. Third and 13, 54 seconds to go before the break and leak in the spread. Three-man Tennessee rush. And Leak goes across the middle. That's caught, but it will be short of the first down at the 44-yard line. Now, keep in mind that uh, the Volunteers cannot stop the right. clock. They used all three very early in the ballgame. Fourth down. I think Florida will let this clock go all the way down, use as much time as they can. The play clock is at 24 the 12 seconds now on the play clock I think they'll go ahead and take a five yard penalty and uh, try to go into halftime with the seven point lead again last year in the ball game they were not winning by much but they were controlling the game it was three to nothing and the very last play of the half Casey Clawson threw a desperation pass into the end zone. James Banks came away with it. The balls went into halftime with the lead and the momentum, and they dominated the second half of play. Eric Wolver is on uh, for the first punt for the Gators tonight. Last year had uh, an average of just under 45 yards per punt. And here's Hefney. He had one returned for a touchdown against UNLV, and it was negated by a penalty against the Volunteers. But he's dangerous. Yes, he is. Had six kicks returned for touchdowns last year at Hargrave Military Academy. Fourth and nine, Wilbur to punt. Very high. And it goes over the head into the end zone. It will uh, result in a touchback with no time left. Well, we've had turnovers and sustained drives and no play bigger, I think, in your view, than that third and ten from the three that resulted in a 21-yard pickup and ultimately a 97-yard touchdown drive for the Tennessee, or the Florida Gators. 21-14 at the break as we've had a variety of long drives tonight. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson, who's with Philip Fulmer. Thanks, Coach. What do you think of your freshman QB's performance in this first half? Well, they've done all right. You know, the the turnovers, they're, they're young, and it's, it's going to happen sometime. Our, you know, we've helped them with two short drives. That, we can't do that, obviously. And and then they had a heck of a 98-yard drive or whatever it was. So we got to get them off the field on third down. And offensively, we've got to stay on the field better. Chris Lee getting it done through the air. What do you need to do to put more pressure on him in the second half? Well, it's... That's, uh, that's, uh, that's tough. You know, we've got to get more pressure. We've got to get off the blocks up front. If you blitz him, you know he's pretty good at uh, getting, getting the ball down the field. So we'll try to mix it up and change up and hopefully get after him a little bit. Thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Vern, back to you. To return the kickoff for the Gators. This one goes left and into the end zone. Caldwell. Will drop to uh, his knee and it'll come out to the 20 yard line. 
Well, Florida, an opportunistic first half team. The two turnovers that they get garnered against Tennessee, Todd, resulted in very, very short touchdown drives, but they've been impressive. What do they, they have need been. to do now? Well, I think for Florida, and they're, we're going to see their offense first, they need to keep protecting Chris Leak and keep the ball in his hands. Ron Zook talked about the running game. They don't have to get up there and try to pound the Tennessee defense, but they have to run enough to keep the Tennessee defense on, honest. I think for Tennessee defensively, they've got to find some way to get some pressure on Chris Leak, and for nothing else, just to knock him on the ground a couple times. Here's the toss. Latsko leads Faison around the uh, left side out of the 26-yard line. And the first half stats presented by Hartford. Well, the passing yards, the big edge goes to Florida. Leak has had his way. The rushing edge, domination by Tennessee, but the turnover battle has been significant. Yeah, a couple of key turnovers, both led to Florida touchdowns, and that's a big reason why they have the 21-14 lead as we start the third quarter. Second down and three, Faison's got a first down across the 30, plus seven. Yeah, see, that's a good, tough run. And again, Florida doesn't have to line up and run it every play, but they've got to run enough and show enough toughness and ability to run the football to keep the Tennessee defense honest. Make them respect the run and play the run and then keep the ball in Chris Leak's hands. Jonathan Colon did a nice job leading that play. The tackle pulled on that play and Faison did a nice job breaking a few tackles. Saw Jason Allen, number 18, missed the tackle. It's first down and 10. High formation, two wide outs to the right side. And a play fake by Leak. This time, nothing doing. Well, there's the first one, the first sack. The first time they put Chris Leak on the ground. Jesse Mahalona in there for the sack. They tried to go play action again. Here's Jesse, makes a nice little move and beats the center. Mike DeGory, a good quick move, and then he gets the feet tangled up of Chris Leak. Jesse Mahalona from Kailua Kona in Hawaii. He's got 15 members of his family here. Their first trip ever to Tennessee. He's a junior college transfer. Loss of nine, here's Leak. Comes up, puts it out. That's caught up at the 40-yard line. That'll leave a third down. Jesse Mahalona, there's a flag down as well. He's 6'2", 300. I met his dad yesterday. He's about that big, too, wasn't he? He's bigger. <laughs> he's a large human being. Yes, he is. And he's a minister on the big island of Hawaii, Mahalona. He's got a brother, Steve, at Tusculum College, and so the family, all 15 of them, and we're traveling around in three large vans, as a matter of fact, are going to be here for a couple of weeks. 21-14, Mahalona at Orange County Community College a year ago. He played only two games and then came here as a junior. They asked for a medical redshirt because he played two. That was denied by the NCAA. So he's got two years to play instead of three at Tennessee. Second and 29, leak, pump, screen pass. Jamel Cornelius down at the 22-yard line. Remember that Kevin Simon, the linebacker, was injured in the first half. Let's get an update from Tracy Wolfson. Tracy? Thanks, Vern. Simon was evaluated. He has a possible ACL tear in his left knee. He is out for the remainder of the game and will likely have an MRI on Monday. Thank you. Oh, boy. He is uh, an emotional leader as well as a physical leader of this team. This leap needs to be smart right here. Third down and very long. They've been great on third down, but this is a very, very difficult situation. Be careful with the football. And they will. They'll hand it off to Deshaun Wynn, and that will bring up fourth down at the 27-yard line. Well, Kevin Simon just, he leaped and came down in an awkward position. Yeah, it's it's very strange. I mean, he's he's just going to kind of rush the passer. He's working against Randy Hand, and as he comes down after jumping, he lands on his left foot first, and I guess that's where the knee just gave out on him. Kind of a freaky injury. Simon, who, as we said, played at Concord de la Salle, that's the high school team that had won 151 in a row before getting defeated by Bellevue, Washington. Then they lost their second game in a row. They're playing tonight out in California. Yeah, they should fire the coach. <laughs> Spoken like the son of a coach. <laughs> and we want to wish your dad, Ron, well in his continue, continuing uh, rehabilitation. Thank you. 
Eric Wilber with the punt. Tennessee with the football. They trail by seven. Brent Schaefer is the quarterback. He started the game and he starts the second half. 18 year old from Deerfield Beach Florida play action Schaefer to throw for no he'll keep it. And comes around the right side is knocked out of bounds that's dangerously uh, close to drawing a, a flag. Hit. That's a clean hit. All righty. Ray McDonald the guy just hustling from his defensive tackle position and uh, Schaefer ended up out of bounds, but he was hit inbound. Uh, that, that's not a bad play by Ray McDonald. Schaefer from Deerfield Beach. He said it's the northernmost city in Broward County. And uh, he was recruited, contacted, it should be said, by Florida. But he said they wanted him. They didn't promise him he'd play quarterback. Yeah, Miami the same way. And he just kind of eliminated schools that were recruiting him as, quote, unquote, an athlete. He wanted to play quarterback for sure. Here's second down. And the handoff up the middle. Yeah, I, I think in this second half now, Tennessee is going to have to make some plays in their passing game. Now, they ran the ball 26 times in the first half and only threw it five times. They're going to have to find a way to make some big plays with their passing game. You take a look at what they've done tonight. Schaefer's only thrown it once. Eric Ains three for four, but a costly interception. And they've got to get some of these young, talented receivers involved making some plays down the field. Third and eight. Schaefer with the change. Now the two running backs make sure they've got it. And the snap. Schaefer. A lot of time. Wide open. Hannon. Number 13, Chris Hannon, a first down out near the 48-yard line. And that's one of those young, talented receivers, Chris Hannon. Excellent speed. Three catches in the opener against UNLV. They keep two backs in, the good protection. Nice job by the offensive line, giving Schaefer a good time to throw, and he makes the deep in route. Nice throw to Chris Hannon for a big play on third down. Brent Schaefer now second uh, pass completion for him. Three catches for Hannon. First down and 10. Derek Tinsley in the backfield, number 20. And the play clock down at three. Here's Schaefer, right side. Jason Swain, number one. Well, it's as if they're on the same page yeah. with you. Well, they've got to make Florida spread out a little bit more. The last two possessions of the first half, Florida's defense, I thought, kind of defended the run a little bit better. And they've got to spread them out and loosen them up a little bit, and they're doing that right now with Brent Schaefer throwing the football. Ball at the 41-yard line, first down and 10. Brent Schaefer said he wanted to attend a school where there was not a returning starting quarterback. Well, Casey Clawson was gone from here. The other school he considered was North Carolina State, where Phillip Rivers, the All-American, had gone into the NFL. Here's Schaefer back, dances to his right, pulls up, lets it go, man coverage for Hannon, and it's incomplete the five-yard line. Nice Ooh. job by Terrence Holmes coming over and helping out the corner. The corner was beat on the play. And Terrence Holmes came over and put a big hit on Chris Hannon. This was not a bad hit. Watch the play. D. Webb is beaten by Chris Hannon. And if it was just one-on-one, -on -one, this would be a completion. But the safety comes over and separates him from the football. Terrence Holmes does what a free safety is supposed to do. Come and help your cornerback out. He didn't hit him in the head. It was just a good, clean, hard tackle by the free safety, Terrence Holmes. Sophomore out of Glassboro, New Jersey. Hannon is still down just inside the five. Out of Sarasota, Florida. Now they've already lost Kevin Simon for the night and perhaps longer. Time called. 9.09 to go, third quarter. Stability of uh, a torn ACL. The uh, middle linebacker for Tennessee. Second down and 10. And the right tackle, Aaron Sears, took a step the wrong direction. And part of that is they were in their stance for so long, you know, and, and, and Tennessee is prior to the snap. Ball start, 76 on the option. That's one of the problems or the risks you run when you're trying to change plays a lot at the line of scrimmage. Your linemen are up there and they're ready to go, you know, and, and they've got to hold their water up there, and uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to hold it. In their game against UNLV with two freshman quarterbacks starting, one of the notable as, uh, aspects of the game, no false starts and no 
uh, the layup games for Tennessee. That is their first penalty tonight. And it's the false start by Aaron Sears. Second down and 15 now. Schaefer, a lot of time. Tries to elude the, the tackles and does. Looks for help downfield. Gets it. <laughs> he's something now. When he, when he tucks it and goes, he's something. He's fast, he's elusive, and he's slippery. And he showed it all right there. He had a lot of time, nobody open. And he eludes Marcus Thomas first, and then he tucks that ball and goes. You see the speed to get downfield. Plant the right foot. Whoop, come on back inside and get about 10 more yards before he's dragged down by Ronaldo Hill. Brent Schaefer with 44 yards on six carries tonight. First down after the 22-yard pickup. Here's the handoff to Gerald Riggs Jr. at the 20th. Rotating 18-year-olds. And uh, here's the way it's gone tonight for these two freshmen. Well, there's been good and bad. I mean, the fumble early on the uh, trick play, but then Brent Schaefer shows you what he can do with his feet. And he just showed us there again. Eric Ainge throwing on the move. Beautiful pass for the touchdown to Justin Reed. And then one that got away from him and set up another Florida touchdown off of this turnover. So good and bad, which you would expect from true freshmen in their first SEC football game. Hand off left side. And this is Riggs Jr. once again. And Channing Crowder makes the tackle, number 55. Here's Eric Ainge. Had the touchdown toss and the interception. The 6'6". 18-year-old from Hillsboro, Oregon. And that leak, that's the old man we were yeah, talking that's about. Right. The old man starting his 11th game. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, you know, he looks different this year. I mean, he played against Tennessee last year, but Tennessee didn't see the real Chris Leak that developed and the, and the one that they're seeing this year. It's a completely different deal. Chris Hannon back on the field now for Tennessee. He winds up wide to the left. On third and three for the Volunteers, blitz coming. Schaefer, out. bumble. He was hit from behind. Looks like Joe Cano is Earl Everett who got there, number 30. Well, number one, Brent Schaefer's got to see the blitz and know that he can't hold it very long. Number two, he's got to know if he's going to get hit, he's got to hold on to the football. If you don't get rid of it, you can't drop it on the ground. Here's the blitz. Everett's going to come unblocked on Schaefer. They're bringing the linebacker Crowder in the middle. Everett comes unblocked, and Brent Schaefer had no idea where he was. And then he lost the football. Lost the football against UNLV, but this was even worse because they're in Florida territory, and they turned it over for the third time tonight. Here's Leak. Drills it right side. Nice play by Jonathan Wade. That's incomplete. Nice play is right by Jonathan Wade. Separated the receiver from the football and probably better for Florida than he did because they would have lost yardage on the play. Jonathan Wade sat out most of last year, played the first two games. He was a receiver his first two years here, and he is a member of what is annually an outstanding Tennessee track team. He qualified in the 200-meter and the 4 by 100 meter relays for the Volunteers this year. He also came to Tennessee football camps with Chris Leak and expected that they would come here together. Never would have thought he would, A, be playing against him, but also playing cornerback against him and not receiver. Second down and 10. That, of course, another of the undercurrents in this game is Chris Leak deciding not to come here. Here's the toss to Faison. He's still free. Down the sidelines and wow, finally. What a run. What oh, a great boy. run. First of all, of using his speed to get to the sideline and outrunning the defensive end, but then patient to set up blocks. I mean, he set up about four blocks once he got to the perimeter. Watch face it. First of all, use his speed to get outside of Jason Hall, number 94. Now, once he turns the corner, he sets up blocks. He's going to set up this block by Latsko, and he just keeps, he sets up about three blocks down the field, all the while staying in bounds and turning in a huge run. How about the uh, block from number 42, yes, Bill Latsko? Excellent block. Stayed with Jonathan Wade and made sure he didn't have a part of the tackle. That's a gain of 33 and a first down. Ball with the 45, Leak. And off to Sean Wynn. Just want to follow up, Todd, on the whole story about Chris Leak. 
He, he committed, as we all know, I think, to Wake Forest as an eighth grader. And his brother, C.J. Leak, started his career at Wake Forest uh, and then transferred after an injury and came here. And it said that uh, Chris Leak, during the recruiting process, took issue with Philip Fulmer's decision to pull C.J. Leak from the Georgia game yeah. in 2002 and said he didn't trust the, the uh, Tennessee coaches and then wound up, of course, signing with Florida. Here's Leak back to this side, up in the air, dropped through the hands of Deshaun Wynn. Well, Deshaun Wynn got distracted by the arms, the desperate arms raising up there of Jason Mitchell because Mitchell was beat. And if Deshaun Wynn catches this, it's a touchdown. But Jason Mitchell got a little bit of a piece of the football, and that was enough to distract Deshaun Wynn. A little trick play, sending the back out of the backfield. They had what they wanted, just couldn't make the completion. Third and six, and Florida has excelled at third down conversions tonight. They're seven of ten. Four of four on a 97-yard drive earlier. Leak has to put it down. He's got help from Deshaun Wynn. He's out of bounds at the 32. Another third down conversion. Yep. Chris Leak doesn't run very much. I mean, he's an athlete, but he doesn't want to run. He wants to throw. If he scrambles, he's scrambling to throw, not to run. But this time, he knew his best avenue to the first down marker was to just run it. Tuck it, knew what he needed, and he got it easily. Another heads-up decision by Chris Leak. And you just have to be impressed with the way this kid plays football. I mean, he is he is so much better than he was last year in watching him. He sees the field better. He looks so much more comfortable and in command of this offense. Another play fake, and it is another good one, and he's got a receiver wide right now. That one is caught throw. by O.J. Small. What a throw on Jonathan Wade. I mean, that was a beautiful throw to the sideline. A deep, deep out off the play action. <laughs> All the way across the field, outside where only his guy can go up and catch it. Get one foot down, and a first down inside the 15-yard line now for the Gators. O.J. Small had six catches in the opener, and he's got six tonight, six for 56 yards. See, Florida is not running for huge numbers, but they're running well enough that it's setting up that play action. Every time they've dialed up the play action, they've had somebody open for a big play. Here's the toss to Deshaun Wynn. He's inside the 10 and churns down to the six-yard line. Just kept the, kept the feet going. Well, this is a good tandem of running backs with Seatrick Faison and Deshaun Wynn. Deshaun Wynn in there now, a big power guy, a guy that's going to run over you, break some tackles, shows good balance at the end of that run as well. Nine for 39 now for Deshaun Wynn. And it's a second down and one at the six. Here's the toss. Wynn dances left and is driven down with a first and goal just outside the one-yard line. Deshaun Wynn. Pretty good lick there by Kevin Burnett. He's, he's leading Tennessee today in tackles, and particularly without his sidekick in there, the middle linebacker Kevin Simon, who went out so early in the game. Kevin Burnett now having to shoulder the burden from that linebacker position for the Tennessee defense. First and goal just outside the one-yard line. Wynn is the back. And Lee falls down at the exchange. Yeah, I think he got stepped on. You know, you see that from time to time. The quarterback's trying to pull out of there. Mike DeGore, the center, is trying to get off the ball quickly. And it looks like he just got stepped on. His left foot got tied up in there, and he does a smart thing of holding onto the football. Instead of trying to make the pitch or trying to do something spectacular, you know, you, you hate to take a loss when you're inside the five-yard line, but it's better than turning the ball over. That's a loss of three. It'll be second and goal from the four. And Chris Leak will call timeout. Mike Loxley is the running back coach, and he gets the signals. The play's called from upstairs by Larry Fedora. Then he signals them in. Time call. Attendance record. Out of the gun. Here's Leak back. Play fake. Hit as he lets it go in the end zone. It's tipped and incomplete. Wow. 
Well, Jamel Cornelius thought the ball was coming to him, and Andre Caldwell thought the ball was coming to him. Leak under pressure, got rid of it right at the last moment, the pressure by Harrelson, but the ball looked like it was going to the back receiver, and Caldwell thought it was coming to him. Chad Jackson said, oh, it's coming to me. It was a tweener. It's third and goal. This is a huge play for the Tennessee defense. If they can force Florida to kick a field goal, they can stay well within their game plan of running the football. Two touchdowns down. It changes the complexion of the game very much. Leak, right side, into the end zone. Incomplete. Jamel Cornelius looked like he had the catch. It looked like he had that one as long as Jabbar Gaffney had one a couple years ago when we were here. Oh, good call. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, the slant route, a good throw by Leak. Cornelius, both hands on it, but as he comes down, the ball hits the ground, and a good call, incomplete, and that brings up a field goal attempt for the Gators. A big, big stop for the Tennessee defense right there. Matt Leach's first field goal attempt of the season. The equivalent of an extra point. It's a 21-yarder. Kick is up. Oh, goodness! Even better for Tennessee. Force him to go for three, and then he pushes it. What is it with short kicks in college football this year? Kickers. LSU and kickers. <laughs> Spoken like a quarterback. Mm. <laughs> Matt Leach a year ago, 21 to 27. Nothing wrong with the snap, nothing wrong with the hole, plenty wrong with the kick. From behind the Florida bench. Here's Matt Leach. The snap was perfect, the hold was excellent. Kick was really not memorable. Not good. Eric Ainge is back on. Eric Ames, the true freshman from Hillsboro. I had a chance to talk to his uncle, Danny Age, earlier this week, and he said they talked a lot because Eric Ames was a fine basketball player. Actually suffered what are called navicular stress factors on the back of both feet while he was playing basketball in Portland. And Danny said that, uh, that Eric's decision about basketball or football kind of came down to the fact that he realized he could be one of the top quarterbacks in college football. Here's the pass out of the backfield. And the catch is made by David Holbert. And he looked around and he loves basketball, but uh, he thought, you know, I'm one of 50 or 100 shooting guards in college basketball. I think I'll concentrate on this sport. And I've got bad feet on top of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is going to slow him down a little bit on the basketball court. There's his dad, Doug, who is four years older. Doug played basketball at Brigham Young University and then coached at Linfield College in Oregon. And uh, as you might assume from uh, Danny Ainge and his accomplishments in the NBA and Doug's tenure at uh, BYU, this is a very competitive family. This pass is incomplete. You know, some fans at home and Tennessee fans may be wondering, oh, why are they throwing so much now? I mean, they ran the ball so well in the first half. Well, we had a graphic up there a little bit earlier, 101 yards rushing in the first quarter, but only 45 cents. The, the Florida defense has settled down a little bit against the run, but the good news, only being down seven, they can still do whatever they want, run or pass. See the rubber band on the right wrist? Well, that's because his uncle Danny and Dan Marley used to wear those rubber bands for good luck with the Phoenix Suns. Not superstitious or anything. Mm -mm. And here's the snap back, and Eric Ainge underneath at the 30. Close. Tony Brown leans out. I don't know where they're going to say that he's down. I think he's going to be oh, wow, just shorter wow. by a nose. I think he got a good spot, actually. I do, too. And uh, they will call the chain out. A nice effort by Brown trying to stretch as far as he could for the first down. Well, this could be a smidgen either way. Oh, 
<laughs> Fourth down. That's and, a, and there's, your, there's your visual definition of a smidgen. Well, it looks like Phillips going to go for it. He likes his offensive line, even though they haven't run with quite the same amount of success as they did in the first quarter. This is less than a yard. You've got an all-SEC left tackle and Michael Munoz, who started 38 games. you got a 270-pound fullback. I think you, you, you got to feel your odds are pretty good at getting a first down on this running play. And a suddenly audacious Philip Fulmer on the sideline. Ains quarterback sneak. That's going to be very close, but I think, yes, the spot's going to yeah, give it to him. He got it. Yep. He, uh, he's 6'6", so all he's got to do That's is right. fall forward, and he's going to get the first down. That's Doug Ainge. Looked like Red Cashin. I can just hear him saying, that's a first down. <laughs> Good surge inside. Jason Respert, the center. Jason Respert was a starting guard last year. They moved him into center this year, and uh, I think he's really found a home there. I mean, he's tried other positions. Looks very good in there at center. First down and 10. Backs in the eye. Ames looks over at Randy Sanders. Ricks. Four out to the 34-yard line. Terrence Holmes. This week's scholar athlete is Tennessee offensive tackle Michael Munoz. Fifth-year senior, 3.67, one of two repeat co-captains of this team. Michael Munoz is dad Anthony, one of the great offensive linemen ever. He's pursuing a graduate degree. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating a thousand dollars to Tennessee's general scholarship fund. Here's Ains standing in there and it's batted down. A nice job by Jeremy Mincy, the defensive end. Knew that he didn't have any chance to get to the quarterback, but he was reading the quarterback's eyes the whole time, got his hands up, and knocked the ball down. So two new defensive ends that Florida are playing this year. Jeremy Mincy is a junior college transfer, came in from Butler Community College out in Kansas. Joe Cohen, the other defensive end, is a sophomore playing for Charlie Strong's defense. Joe Cohen was a fullback last year, starting at defensive end in this defense this year. Third and six. Latter stages, third quarter. Florida brings five. The blitz is on. Ainge fires it complete nice out to the 43-yard line. Catch is made by Derek Tinsley, the senior from Marietta, Georgia. Nice job by Eric Ainge, knowing that he had protection. They brought five, and he had plenty of guys in there to block, and he stayed right in there. He didn't panic, and he waited for Tinsley to come open on the in route. And then he delivered a nice low football for him so he could catch it and go down for the first down. Eric Ainge told us uh, yesterday that he's got a dream for the volunteers himself and Brent Schaefer that they play together for four years, that they deliver a national championship, and one day they're both first-round draft picks. Yep. There's Riggs with the carry. Went on a quick count that time. They haven't shown many quick counts. They caught the Florida defense napping a little bit on that play and gashed him inside. Again, I can't emphasize enough how big that stop was on the last Florida possession because staying down by seven now they can just stay with whatever they wanted to do throwing the football with Eric Haynes running out of the eye formation there's no sense of urgency on the offense's part second down and two and again Ainge looks over Tennessee bench that's Rick Clawson number 16 who's helping to signal the plays in Ainge comes near side it's caught Catch made at the 45-yard line by Chris Hannon, number 13. I think four, I think Tennessee got away with one a little bit there. I'm not sure the fullback was set. He was turning around looking to see what the change of the play was going to be called. And before he got back into his stance, the ball was snapped. But it, it went unnoticed, and uh, Eric Ainge with another good completion. The coaches think Eric Ainge reminds them so much of Peyton Manning uh, and his mannerisms. His, you know, his, he's always asking questions in the meeting. He's a real student of the game, and uh, he's showing great poise and composure out here running the Tennessee offense on this drive. 
That's the end of the third quarter with the score. 21-14 Gators. We'll return to Neyland Stadium right after this word from your local station. Volunteers with a first down and 10 at the Florida 45-yard line. Eric Ainge. On at quarterback for the moment, Gerald Riggs. He is in back of the fullback, Corey Anderson. Here's the handoff to Riggs and uh, does get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Well, if you think back over the first half, the biggest play, quite obviously, was that third and ten from the three-yard line, a 21-yard gain. You look back at this half, yeah. and uh, the goal line stop was huge. Goal line stop and then the missed field goal, and that, that gave Tennessee some momentum. Their offense came on the field with Eric Ainge. They converted a couple third downs, and they moved the ball down the field, and they're right in the football game, trailing by seven. They can do whatever they want offensively, run or pass. Second down and 10, no gain on the last play. From the 45. Blitz, Ainge being chased, lets it go. And it's caught by Brett Smith, number nine. His first catch of the night, that's a gain of 11. Nice job by Eric Ainge, knowing that he was going to be under pressure, buying a little extra time on the bootleg, and then finding Brett Smith, just kind of opening up into an open area against the zone defense. Renato Hill gave him a lot of room out there, and Brett Smith found the soft spot and just stayed out there and waited for the football. Another of these tall receivers for Tennessee, yeah. they've got seven men at the wideout positions who are 6'2 or taller. And this is the 12th play of this drive. Riggs tackled by Terrence Holmes. See, I think uh, I think this Tennessee offense, there's a lot of good things in store for him as this season continues and into the next season because the last couple years, Tennessee's always wanted to run the football. That, that's their bread and butter. But you've got to have some wide receivers that threaten the defense on the outside. In the last couple years, they haven't had that. And so then their running game has gone down because defenses didn't respect the pass. But you've got to respect the pass with Eric Ainge and Brent Schaefer and some of these talented speed guys on the outside. Here's the blitz again, and Hannon avoids for a moment the tackle, and he's down at the 22-yard line, Chris Hannon. Hannon, the speedster among the wideouts. Eric Ainge from Hillsborough, Oregon. Brent Schaefer from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Rotating quarterbacks, both are 18. Schaefer for the night, three of four for 40 yards, 38 on the ground. You see, they, they really create a dilemma and a problem for a defensive coordinator with a short amount of time to prepare for a game. You've got to prepare for two different styles. Ainge is not going to, he's mobile, he's athletic, but he's not going to run on you as much as Brent Schaefer. But he's tall, he sees things out of the pocket, and he throws very well. Off his back foot, third cut, touchdown, Tennessee, Brent Smith from Eric Ainge. And give the assist to Corey Bailey because Corey Bailey thought he had a sure interception at the two-yard line, went for it, and missed. And Brent Smith turned it into a touchdown. Smith is at the top of your screen. It's a cover two. That means the corner turns him over to the safety. The safety comes over, thinks he has an interception, but the ball was thrown high for the tall receiver, and Brent Smith converts it into six. Here's the extra point. Up and good. We're tied. Brent Smith, first touchdown. 23 yards with 13.02 to go. Eric Ainge finds Brett Smith. Here's the kick. Jackson. Touchback. Take a look at the touchdown again. When you hear cover two, that means a corner's up here, the safety's going to be here, and the area where there's a weakness on the defense is right in there. Now watch as the receiver runs the fade route to the outside. Corey Bailey, the safety, comes over like he should to make the play, but he underestimated the height of the throw. He went for the interception. The ball was thrown high to a tall receiver, and Tennessee comes away with the touchdown. A beautiful throw. Chris Leak. Behind center, ball marked ready for play. 21 all, and the missed field goal from 21 yards out by Matt Leach led to that touchdown drive. Here's Leak, 
pulls up and lets it go. Nice play, and O.J. Small is there. The last time Florida had the football, they drove all the way down deep into Tennessee territory. And then on second down, a little misfire. Third down, looked like it could have been close to a touchdown. They miss, and then on fourth down, an easy missed field goal that gave new life to Tennessee. They got the ball, went 80-plus for the touchdown. They had first and goal on the one. And remember, Chris Leak got stepped on on the first play, and they lost two yards. So they were inside the one-yard line and came away with nothing the last time they had the football. Chris Leak was reminiscing with us on Wednesday about his first visit ever to this stadium. It was a recruiting trip. His mom and dad, Curtis and Karen, were here as his brother, C.J. Leak, was being recruited that night. It was Peyton Manning's last night a victory for the balls over Vanderbilt. Now here is Chris Leak in a Florida uniform. And Faison gets the handoff after the 35. Well, our coverage of the SEC on CBS continues next week. We're going to go to Fayetteville. And we'll watch the University of Alabama 3-0, but having lost Brody Croyle tonight, they'll take on an Arkansas team that uh, played really well against Texas uh, despite losing last week. Second and nine here, 21 all. DeGore makes the line calls and snaps it back. Here comes the blitz from the side, and he misses it. Here's Lee, pulls up and lets it go, throws it away. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan Hefty, yes. He can't believe that he missed him. But that's a true freshman, and Chris Leak excited that he was able to get away from Hefney, an outstanding athlete, but just kind of, uh, Chris Leak did an Ole on him. He came unblocked, and he left him right there, and then he had to throw it away. Nobody opened down the field. Third and nine. Tennessee has three down. Hefney showing blitz again. They'll bring four. Leak up. Forces left. Now dances back. And elusively runs out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. Good coverage downfield by the Tennessee defense. They didn't bring more guys than Florida could block. He just had nowhere to go with the football. Two plays in a row. They bring a little bit of pressure, but they have great coverage down the field. Zone defense. And Chris Leak not able to find anywhere to go with the football and gets flushed out two plays in a row. It was Hefney who helps force him out. It is Hefney who is back to return the punt. That's John Chavis, the defensive coordinator. And Eric Wilbur is on to punt on fourth and 13. The only bad news about that defensive series is Jason Allen had to be helped off the field at the end of that play, and he's their most experienced guy in the secondary. Wilbur's punt. And Hefney comes up, makes the grab with a fair catch at the 32-yard line. A 38-yard punt but nothing on the return. We've got a quick glimpse of Jason Allen. We're tied at 21. 33 to go in the ball game. Eric Ainge continues at quarterback now. Here's a play fake. Blitz reads it perfectly. Anderson, the big fullback, out to the 41-yard line as Eric Ainge finds the hot receiver. Tomorrow on the NFL Today, Greg Gumbel checks in with the Giants' Tom Coughlin, and Shannon Sharp catches up with the Broncos' newest groundbreaker, Quentin Griffin. That's tomorrow on the NFL Today at 12 Eastern time. Second Boy, and one. That was a nice job again by Eric Gage. That was a corner blitz right into the face of that bootleg, and he didn't panic. He just dropped the ball off to his fullback. Mm. Second down and one. Nothing doing on this one, and that'll bring up a third and two. That may have been a loss of one. Well, you said, uh, you know, Philip Fulmer told us if one of his young quarterbacks had the hot hand, he'd stay with him. Yeah, and I think he probably feels that with Eric Gaines right now because he's probably a little bit more advanced as a passer than Brent Schaefer. Brent Schaefer's a good thrower, but Eric Gaines a little more consistent throwing the football and spreading the ball around. Doesn't have the same 
threat as a run that Brent Schaefer has, but right now they know they've got a mixed run and pass to win this football game. Third and two. And there's the look over with the two quarterbacks on either side of Randy Sanders. Now Ainge back under center on third down. He goes across the middle too high. And double coverage on Tony Brown. It'll be fourth down. One of the few times when they've looked to the sideline and changed the play that it's been changed to a pass. Just about every one has been changed to a run. That time they changed to a pass on third down and came up short and they'll have to punt the football. Vernell Brown is back to return it for the Gators. And Dustin Colquitt, we mentioned uh, the kicking Colquitt family. Yes. His dad was a great kicker, his cousin as well. He didn't get off a good one the last time because he bobbled the snap, but he might drill this one. Nice and high. It's a boomer. And Vernell Brown, they go, oh, muffs it. He does get back on top of it. But Cole quit a boomer. Philip Fulmer calls him a weapon. He said he basically won two or three games for him last year by flipping the field and pinning a team back. And right now, Chris Leak and his Florida offense are pinned way back at their own five. 200 seats and 17 rows. Tonight, 109,000 are watching as the Gators and the Volunteers have at each other. First and 10, score tied 21, 9.52 to go in the ball game. And Chris Leak under his center, Mike DeGore. And the change. Well, the play clock says zero. And I don't think they reset it. it. It didn't run down on Chris Leak, but they never reset it. And so that's what the officials are going to do now. Reset the 25-second clock. We'll reset the 25-second clock. We'll start on the snap. Heard Penn Wager say they would start on the snap. And you can see to your left, uh, the play clock had not been reset. Ball in the six. They haven't reset it yet. Yeah, we're having a bit of a technical problem here. Maybe one of those 109,000 persons sitting on a cord somewhere. <laughs> or, or kicked one out of the socket. <laughs> or an obstinate timekeeper. No. Second clock. Keep the 25 second clock. He will get down to the final five seconds and start seconds from the so we can get the clock fixed. Well, I just heard uh, the word malfunction and kind of shivered. Today, Tuesday on The Amazing Race, just four teams remain. Who will win a million dollars? Don't miss the two-hour season finale of The Amazing Race at a special time Tuesday at 9, 8 Central on CBS, America's most watched. Network. Well, the thing about this clock that's important is as much changing at the line of scrimmage Chris Leak's doing, now an official's going to keep the play clock on the field, and he's got to watch for him, for his signal. Nice run on first down all the way up to the 13-yard line. Yeah, big hard run by Deshaun Wynn. The only thing you worry about on a play like that when you're fighting for extra yardage and guys are ripping at you that they don't rip the ball out, but he did a nice job of covering up the football and protecting it. Dirk McBride is uh, in defensively. Omar Gaither is on there now. You saw John Poe, number 56. He's playing in place of the injured middle linebacker, Kevin Simon. Second down and two. <laughs> Left side, they try. Nothing doing. <laughs> Jesse Mahalona and Turk McBride collaborate for the tackle. Third and three. Well, he astutely observed that this might be called a significant play. Yeah. Big play. 
Now, the, the official who is calling and keeping the 25-second clock is directly in front of Chris Leak, down at about the 35-yard line. So when he gets into the bottom five, he's given a little countdown signal so Chris Leak can see when he's inside of five seconds. He has, he's starting to signal right now, and Chris Leak has to call timeout. Now, this is a, a definite disadvantage not having the play clock that the quarterback can see. It looks like it may be back on for this play. See, here's the guy right here who is counting down for Chris Lee. And when he gets inside of five seconds, he's given the hand signals. Chris Lee didn't have enough time to call the play. Had to call timeout. Maybe he'll have the clock when he comes back. One of their last five. Safe to say this one's pretty big. Third and three. Play clock is operating again. Four-man rush, pass across the middle, first down, Florida. At the 19-yard line, that's a gain of six. The catch made by O.J. Small, a career high of eight catches well, tonight. He has been the go-to guy. When Chris Leak has needed a big catch, he's gone to O.J. Small. And, and O.J. Small, he's trying to make this a huge year. He's the only senior in the receiving core. He's a big receiver, 6'1", 226, doesn't have the great speed, but he runs excellent routes and he has great hands. And quarterbacks like guys who catch the football consistently. One of the few times tonight that the Gators have gone with a twin tight end set. Markel Thompson, David Kenner are on. Here's another good play fake. Well, he's got it. Chris Lee, he goes deep, and it's caught. Here we go. Chad Jackson, touchdown Florida. 81 yards. Brandon Johnson, the strong safety for Tennessee, went for the play on the ball. But it was a beautiful throw by Chris Leak with just enough loft on the football to get over the strong safety. If he throws that ball any flatter, it's for sure knocked down and maybe intercepted. Man, what a throw. In the first half, they went 97 yards for a touchdown. In the fourth quarter, they go 94 yards for a touchdown. But they got 81 of them on that play. Every time they needed a big play, they've gone to play action, and, it's, and they've just had them wide open, running crossing routes. Chad Jackson from 81 yards out. This is the one area that Chris Leak has made a huge improvement in from last year to this year. Ball fakes, play action fakes. Every time they've gone to it, they've had somebody open on the crossing route. This time, it goes for 81 and a touchdown. Incredible. Talk about a guy with conflicting emotions tonight. Well, the parents, obviously, but how about C.J. Leak? They are so close. Now, let's take a look at it again. Well, again, the play action, that's where they've gotten their big plays. And you mentioned the two tight ends. They brought that in for maximum protection. It's just two men going out the crossing route. And watch the safety, Brandon Johnson. He's going to see the deep crossing route. He's not going to bite on the play fake, but as he goes for the ball, he just barely gets his fingers on it. He can't get a hand on it, just fingers, and that's not enough to alter the course of the throw. And Chad Jackson turns it into a touchdown. Mm, mm, mm. CJ and Chris, four years difference, best friends. And Chris Leak's team leads by seven. Here's a handoff to Jabari Davis, number 34. And uh, that was a thing of beauty. Let's take a look at it again. Well, the play action. Florida has run for 126 yards in the game. They don't have as many yards rushing as Florida, but enough to make that play action effective. Every time they've dialed up play action, they've had somebody running wide open on the crossing route. That time, the biggest one of the game. Well, Eric Ainge continues as the quarterback now. For the Volunteers of Tennessee, they'll go from the spread, three wideouts to the right side, second down and nine. Quick flip, incomplete. That was intended for Chris Hannon. It's going to bring up third and nine. With under seven to go. I would not, Excuse me. I was just going to say, I would not say this is four down for uh, Tennessee. If they don't convert this third down and ten with Eric Gaines, they'll punt the football with Colquitt and hope that their defense can come up with another big stop. Seven minutes left. There's still a lot of time in the football game. Tennessee with uh, all three of their timeouts. 
the one team in the SEC that has been the most successful coming into Neyland Stadium is a team that leads right now by seven. Here's Ainge. Incomplete good coverage. Late flag from behind. Wasn't as good as I thought. Well, I, I think there was a penalty. I think Jarvis Herring either got a hold or he had a hand on the jersey and reached around with the right hand to knock the ball loose. But I think his left hand may have been uh, interfering. And that's the call from Penn Wagers. Now well, they'll bring it back, walk off 15. That will be a first down. Watch Jarvis Herring, the free safety. He's got a hold of him with the left hand around the waist and knocks the ball away with the right. Good call. The official in front couldn't see the left hand. The official behind could and made the correct call. That'll penalty and a first down for Tennessee. Jarvis Herring. Seven penalties against the Gators, only one thus far for Tennessee. And here's Ainge back under his center, Jason Resper, who's in his first year as a starter. There's the five count now by the official down the middle of the field. Plenty of time for Eric Ainge. Davis puts his shoulder down, is forced out of bounds by Jerome, uh, Jeremy Mincy. And again, the uh, play clock has become inoperative. And, and again, it's an issue because both teams have been trying to change and call things at the line of scrimmage. They look to the sidelines to get the checks, they make the calls, and then they have to be aware of what the time is. And with no working play clock, they've got to pay attention to the referee down the field and his hand signals. The back judge. Second down and seven. There is a scramble for the loose football. It would appear that uh, Tennessee recovered. Well, another big third down play now for the balls and Eric Ainge. They converted the last time because of the penalty. Just not a good exchange between Respert and Eric Ainge. And a senior's always going to blame the freshman on that one. May have been just a case where Eric Ames was a little bit too occupied with the coverage and trying to get back into his setup and didn't make sure of the snap first. Third and ten. Third and nine officially. Timeout called Tennessee. And the clock is stopped with six minutes and one seconds remaining. 28-21 Gators. Brent Schaefer gives you the ability if things break down to maybe make the play with his legs. Eric Ainge probably not going to do the same thing. There's the blitz and the screen pass. They got the big play. First down at the 48-yard line. Big Aaron Sears out there, the right tackle, getting the key block to spring. That one for the first down. This Aaron Sears is impressive. The right tackle. Young guy out there along with Cody Douglas. Those big guys out there getting some blocks. And Chris Hannon turns it into a first down. Aaron That's Sears, 6'4", 315-pound sophomore. That's a 14-yard gain on third and long. 540 to go. First down and 10. Here's Ainge. A little too hot. Uh, a little too hot, too. High and yep. hot. <laughs> if you're going to throw it hot, you better throw it down low so he can go down and catch it. That'll bring up a second and ten. Double header for you tomorrow. The NFL on CBS. First game, featured game, Indianapolis at Tennessee. And the second game of the double header, the featured game is Cleveland at Dallas. It all begins with Greg, Dan, Sterling, and Boomer. The NFL today, tomorrow. Did I say Sterling? I'm sorry, Shannon. <laughs> Shannon Sharp, not Sterling Sharp. Second down and ten. Jamari Davis. A little surprised why he's in the game right now. Uh, he's not, you know, he's not going to give you the big, big time runs. I mean, he's going to get you the tough yardage. But uh, maybe he's just the dependable guy right now with pass protection. He's a bigger back. 
They've got him in there instead of Cedric Houston, instead of Gerald Riggs or Corey Larkin. And they've got him in there on third down and six. Here's Ainge across the middle. Let his, oh no. boy, <laughs> incomplete. That was Jarvis Herring again, and there was a little bit of contact, but no flag on that one. Well, uh, Doug and Diane Ainge made the trip down here for back here from uh, Hillsboro, Oregon. Randy Sanders was telling us yesterday that uh, the first game two weeks ago, they kept calling and saying, now listen, we're going to make the trip back. This is not inexpensive from Portland to Knoxville. You promised me our son is going to play? <laughs> Randy said, yeah, he'll play a Just lot. Just a little. <laughs> They're going to go for it with Eric Ainge on fourth and six. Three wideouts, two backs to help protect Eric Ainge. Respert snaps it back. Three-man rush. Here's Ainge. Goes deep. Has a man. A Tony Brown. I guess that's why. He's a freshman quarterback, but that was a senior wide receiver who came up with a huge play for Tennessee. Six foot two, 200 pound senior out of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. A big, big catch against his home state team. Eric Ainge, what poise on fourth and six delivers. 32 yards, their son to Tony Brown. And here's Gerald Riggs back on the field. And he gets a couple down to the 13 yard line. I'm still surprised they went for it. With yeah, I, I am to too. I mean, it, you know, it worked out and they've got the big play, but because my anticipation would have been if Ron Zook would have got the ball inside the 10 yard line, that he would have been pretty conservative here with a touchdown lead. And uh, Tennessee would have had two timeouts if they wouldn't have used that last one. But hey, that's a moot point now. It worked out and they're inside the 20. Second down and nine. 425 to go. And Eric Ainge, who's gone for most of the second half. Brent Schaefer did have the opening series. Here's the handoff to Jabari Davis. Goes left. Nice defensive work. See, Jabari Davis doesn't have the speed to get outside against this Florida defense. And uh, again, he's had some good games against Florida, but mo mostly, you know, in short yardage situations. He had 78 yards on 20 carries last year down in Gainesville but he is more their short yardage guy than he is their open field guy. And that brings up a third and eight at the 13. Volunteers hoping to hear Rocky Top played by the band for the 27th time tonight. He went to Tony Brown the last time. Here's Tony Brown right here on this play. Here's Ainge. Fires it inside. Jason Swain eludes a tackler. He's in. Touchdown, Tennessee. defending and the try for the tying extra point James Wilhoyt he missed it oh my goodness are you kidding me he had made 40 50 in a row coming into this one and just pushed it dead right. Oh, good. Anybody see good snap, good hold? Anybody see LSU and Auburn this right. afternoon? Anybody see Oregon State LSU two weeks ago? What is it? There's the touchdown from Swain as he dives in. 
and uh, breaks the plane. And then the extra point. Will Hoyt, who had hit 47 in a row, all 41 last year, six of six this year for the sophomore. Florida is anticipating the possibility of an onside kick. It does not come. And instead, it'll be a touchback and come out to the 20-yard line. Boy, you called it. I mean, this afternoon, LSU and Auburn, LSU missed their first extra point of the day, and it came back to haunt them. And this one, my goodness. I mean, you, you, you think it's a chip shot, a gimme? There are no gimmies, especially early in the football season. And he knew it immediately. Philip Fulmer knew it as well. And he's never missed one till then, right? Right. right. Perfect. Wow. Now, hoping that he'll have a chance for the game winner for the field goal. Here comes a little screen out to Faison. He rumbles out near the 29-yard line. And the clock shows 314 and running. Tennessee has one timeout left. So Florida right now, what they're thinking is they can't get complacent. I mean, there's three minutes left, so they've got to make a couple first downs. They've got to be aggressive offensively but smart. Their running backs and wide receivers have to protect the football, and they have to try to stay in bounds if at all possible. Make the clock be an enemy to Tennessee. Under three to go. Both teams with one timeout. Use as much of the clock as you can, but still be aggressive offensively and hold on to that football. Play clock at two. They just do get it snapped. And a nice job, but uh, Faison. Good second with, effort. Yes, it was. And that should be enough to move the chain. You know, again, when these two teams played last year in Gainesville, Chris Leak and Seatrick Faison were not big factors. Well, they are the focal points of the Florida offense this year, and both of them have played exceptionally well tonight. Deshaun, Deshaun Wynn has played well for Florida as well. Deshaun Wynn is in there now, but deep back in the eye, you saw Faison limp off. First down and 10. They didn't get it off. And they got a five-yard penalty either way because the left guard moved and they didn't get the playoff in time. And that will stop the clock with 2.02 to yes. go. One of the few mistakes Chris Leak has made. Oh, they're giving him a timeout. Wow. Well, it wasn't a mistake by Chris Leak. <laughs> Whether he called it or someone else, somebody dodged the bullet that time for Ron Zook. A missed Tennessee extra point. 2.02 to go, first and 10, Chris Leak and the Gators. And Deshaun Wynn breaks it out to the 20, 36-yard line. Now, the shame of it to me is, is, this may sound silly, but this game deserved to go to overtime because it's been so well played, well coached, well officiated, and uh, both teams played their hearts out. And uh, a missed extra point looming large now is the difference. Well, James Wilhoyt, a freshman All-American a year ago. One can only imagine the size of the pit in his stomach right now with the missed extra point. 41 of 41 a year ago, 6 of 6. We've seen uh, during the timeout a couple of very nice gestures from teammates yeah. who, and coaches who've come over to commiserate with him a little bit, but the loneliness must be just uh, unimaginable. Both teams out of timeouts. 28-27, Ron Zook. He was on this Tennessee staff in the mid-80s, 84 through 86. Bus load of his family from Loudonville, Ohio, has come down to watch the game tonight. Asked him the other day if he knew the words to Rocky Top. And he said, well, his oldest daughter, Jacqueline, learned the first song she ever learned was Rocky Top. <laughs> She learned to talk here in Knoxville. He was a little concerned that she might <laughs> speak forever with he for what he pronounces a pronounced Tennessee twang. Second and four. Comes the blitz. They stuff him. John Poe makes the tackle. 
Chris Leak for the night. Well, Chris Leak has been everything is advertised. I mean, he has run the offense. He's been unflappable in front of 109,000 people. He had one interception early, but he has been on the mark with just about everything else. 22 of 31, 286 yards and three more touchdowns tonight. Three in the opener, six to start this 2004 season. Third and three with 119 to go. Stopped him. It'll be fourth down. Stopped him, but they can't stop the clock. They've used their last timeout. Florida will let the clock go down as far as possible. There's a flag down, though, on the far sideline. Right in front of the Tennessee bench. And it looks like, boy, what personal oh, foul. Personal foul on Florida. You never see the first oh, one, do you? What a bad penalty. Dallas Baker. Well, see, the thing that's so Let's bad, 15-yard penalty, foul. now they've got a Number punt 81. from deep in their own territory. Jonathan Wade with the first slap or punch. Here's Wade number four. And this is a running play. This is so far away from the action, and the side judge is watching. Oh, there's the first one, there's the second one, and there's the penalty. Now, I don't know how you choose which one you penalize, but that was a huge break against the Florida Gators. Well, it uh, looked to me like it was an, an error in judgment by the side judge. How could he was looking right at the two players. Jonathan Wade with the first slap. Dallas Baker with the retaliation. And with something less than Solomonic wisdom, the side judge penalized for it. Jonathan Hefney can't get out of the net. They usually say it's the second guy that gets caught because the first one you don't see. Right. But that time they both were seen. Boy, oh boy. I mean, just, just the difference in field position. The Tennessee starts now instead of where they would have started. James Will Hoyt, if he does get a chance, as long as a 51-yarder. Last year. Yeah. In Gainesville. And he is praying for a chance. You bet you. Now again for Tennessee, 43 seconds, no timeouts. The clock will stop on first downs. Eric Ainge has to keep his team moving quickly. And in this case, you tell your receivers, if you can catch it and get out of bounds, get out of bounds and stop the clock. Two backs in to help protect Ainge. Three-man Florida rush. Ainge across the middle. Diving try, Hannon, no. Incomplete. Great effort. Great effort by Hannon. Second and ten. The goal is the 35-yard line for the Tennessee offense to get within the range of Will Hoyt. They need 25 yards to get there. They don't need it all in one play, though. And again, they'll keep two backs in to help uh, with the protection. So three men spread wide. And a three-man rush. Ainge. Comes to his left, pulls up across the middle. Hannon to the 40. The clock will stop on the first down while they reset the chain. And they can spike the ball. As soon as Eric Gaines gets up here, he'll get him set, and he'll spike the football to stop the clock. And then they'll huddle up and call what they want. Clock hasn't started yet, so they haven't lost any time with 30 seconds left. Now it's Mark ready for, ready for play. Not yet. Now. Stop it. Will Hyde's long, 51 yards a year ago. Boy, you go back to the 15-yard penalty. What, what a huge addition of yardage for Tennessee to start this possession. That was a three-man rush. I wonder if Charlie Strong wants to dial up some pressure this time on Eric Ames. First down, ball on the 40-yard line. Hannon is wide to the right. He's the speedster. The other two are split down low. Tony Brown is in the slot. 
High snap. Ainge has it. It's caught. Now they've got to hurry. 23 seconds. They're going to try to spike it again, which they've got time to do that. Going into about 15 seconds here. It would be a 50-yarder. Now Philip Fulmer turns to Randy Sanders and said, what next? James Wilhoy missed the extra point. That's the difference in the ball game. They're going to kick it right now. Here he comes. Here we go. Fourth down. From the 50. For the win. Hole is good. It's got enough distance. He nailed it. Talk about redemption. Now Tennessee's going to get an unsportsmanlike for being on the field. Yes, they are. That's going to make the kickoff go back farther. Now Florida won't have time for a play but they'll get to catch the ball a little bit closer to the goal. What a kick. Coaching staff was out imploring the volunteers to show some discipline. Oh, it's not going to be such a long night after all for James Wilhoyt. Boy, he drilled it. I mean, he drilled it. Dead center, plenty of legs. From goat to hero. Philip Fulmer's got the bit of a stress fracture. <laughs> but he can still do a little dance on the sidelines. Now don't forget the penalty. Tennessee will kick off from the 20. Dallas Baker was flagged for the unsportsmanlike because he retaliated when Jonathan Wade hit him first. Stop the clock. Gerard Parrish was the holder. Philip Fulmer is the coach. Who said white men can't jump? <laughs> Not me. From the 20. What a dandy kickoff. Wow. I think he's got a little uh, <laughs> excitement running through his body. Here's the lateral back. It's in the books. missed one from 21 yards out. My goodness. I'm not sure what Philip Fulmer is going to do with this quarterback situation from here. But if I'm making the call, I think Eric Ainge is your starting quarterback.
Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson with Philip Fulmer. Thanks a lot, Vern. Coach, congratulations. What a win today. How did these two freshman quarterbacks do it, especially Ainge? Well, I think the whole football team helped the quarterbacks a lot, but those guys, we got this, this team got a lot of courage, got a lot of character to it. And it's a great win for us, and you know, hopefully we can build on this. It wasn't pretty. We helped them a lot. But at the end, they had the character and the guts to go get it done. I'm proud of our team. Does this determine your quarterback situation at all? I'm sorry? Does this determine your quarterback situation at all? Well, it's a long season. We've got each week to got a chance to try to go get better. Thanks a lot, Coach, and go enjoy the win. Thank you. All right, Tracy. Let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim. James Wilhoy to win it for the Volunteers. For the win. Waiting for the snap. Henderson to hold. There it is. Kick on the way. The kick is long and high and spinning. Good! Wilhoy! Somewhere in the background, I think I heard the voice of Bob Kessler. The play-by-play -play radio man for the Tennessee Volunteers. 